Excited fans in purple and gold. There's plenty in crimson and gray as well. It's a gray, wet, blustery day, but none of that matters because it's time for that annual showdown. This is the 92nd edition of the Apple Cup between Washington State and Washington. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Pickett. Welcome to Seattle and this great game between these two sides. We look forward to another exciting contest between the Cougars and the Huskies. We have two of the best analysts around joining us in the box today. First, Sonny Six Killer and Sonny, this Husky team trying to bounce back a little bit after the loss to UCLA. They want to come up with a victory today to guarantee they'll go to California for a bowl. The question, of course, Pasadena or San Diego? Well, hopefully it's the Rose Bowl in L.A. that they'll be able to go to, but that's all. Um, nothing they can do about that game down in the Bay Area this afternoon. Their priority is to play Washington State Cup today, come away with a victory against the Cougs, which won't be an easy task. And the other big question coming in is how will Marcus Kuiasasopo perform coming off a not so good outing against UCLA last week? Well, so far this year he's come back very well after a poor outing. As he goes, so go the Huskies this past season. Even with that big game against Stanford, 509 yards of total offense, the following week, 15 rush yards and only 12 for 25 passing. I tell you, he needs to pick it up today. Now give UCLA's defense some credit as well off that bye week to come up with a scheme to stop Tuiasa Sopo. What will the Cougars scheme be? For that, we turn to Bud Namick, truly a man for all seasons. Basketball last night, welcome back to football today. We're glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here too, I'm glad to make it. The Cougars, of course, looking forward to this game and obviously the fact that their bowl game is next week when they play in Hawaii. They'd like to spoil the Husky chances of going to Pasadena, and if they do so, they're going to have to play great defense against this Husky offense. And Steve Gleason is the leader of this Washington State defense. He was leading the Pac-10 in tackles until he suffered a high ankle sprain last week in the first quarter against USC. It'll be interesting to see how far he's able to go today. Gleason and then Grady Emerson, you see there, and some other Cougar linebackers, even safeties, are going to shadow Marcus Tuiasasoko. It's going to be a banged-up team, but the Cougars will hope for some pride today. Meanwhile, the Huskies, as we said, trying to come back off of last week's loss to UCLA. Rick Neuheisel says there's just one word for that performance a week ago. Absolutely sickening, and, and it's uh, demoralizing, and it's, uh, I mean, it's one of those that absolutely makes you nauseous. But you have to be very careful about how long you let the hangover last, uh, because we've got you know, a tall order this week. We've got to play well against Washington State, who has nothing to lose. They're going to play their best football game of the year, which is appropriate because it's the biggest football game of the year, and it's important that we uh, do the same. You know that both sides will be up for this one. Our analysts are color-coordinated to help the play-by-play -play guy. It's the Cougars and the Huskies from Seattle coming up next on Fox Sports Net. Back in Seattle, the wind's dying down a little bit. It was rather windy all morning long. The bridge is swaying across the lakes. And we are inside a sold out Husky Stadium. You see the temperature in the mid 40s. The winds gusting and the rain has been somewhat horizontal at times. Cougs are hoping for snow. <laughs> Couldn't bring it across with him. Mike Price, he won't see any snow next week as Bud mentioned rounding out the season in Hawaii. His 11th year as the head coach at Washington State. 58 wins, 65 losses. Second all time in career wins behind the legendary Babe Hollingberry. Rick Neuheisel in his first year as the head coach at Washington, bringing a six and four mark with him into today's Apple Cup showdown. And Rick has said he's spent a good part of this week just kind of learning some of the history of the Apple <laughs> Cup, getting his feet wet into this rivalry. And speaking of the history, the numbers in favor of Washington by a 58, 27 and six margin. The Huskies moving to Pasadena through the Apple Cup victory four times, missed out in consecutive years, first in Pullman, in that first game played on the WSU campus in nearly 30 years. And then the Cougars came over and did it in 83. And of course, the last time they met here, perhaps the most favorable outcome for a Cougar team in Seattle in their history against the Huskies as they won and clinched their first Rose Bowl berth in more than 60 years. Ryan Lindell trying to figure out the win more than anything else, perhaps. And Paul Arnold, who has a 100-yard kickoff return for a score this season, will be back deep along with Joe Jarzinka. Butch trying to rally the Cougar faithful. Everybody on their feet all the way around the stadium, and we're just about ready to get things underway. Hey, Todd, there's a rumor that Paul Sorensen is inside Butch this afternoon. <laughs> if that's the case, then you watch for Butch to make a tackle down the sideline, a pooch kick and a flag thrown. 
Cougars didn't see the fair catch Spencer call. Spencer Morona making the signal for the fair catch, and not only will the Huskies benefit from the short kick, they'll get additional field position from the penalty. And before we even get a snap from scrimmage, Jay Strikers and his crew will go to work. Marcus Tuiasosopo leading the Washington offense out Dead on the ball, field. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking the team. 15-yard penalty, first down. There's a look at Jay Strikers. Dave McCullough is the umpire. Cleo Robinson, the head linesman. Chuck Subin, the line judge. Brian O'Kane, the field judge. Colin McDermott, the side judge. Terry Wilson, the back judge. Marcus Tuiasosopo now second in the Pac-10 in total offense. Nearly 58% completion. Almost 2,100 yards, 12 TDs against the 11 interceptions, and as we said, dropped off to second in the conference. Nearly 500 yards rushing. He is Washington's second leading rusher this season. Play action on first down and a toss, a safe toss to Pat Conniff. Sure hands out of the backfield and a first down at the Washington State 40-yard line. Ninth catch of the year for Conniff coming out of the backfield. The rest of the starting unit for Washington. Silvers, Nelson, Ben, Ward, Connell, the only senior on the front line that has continued to improve as the year has gone along. Sean Conniff in the backfield. Jurgens, Looker, and Elstrom across the front. Jurgens, seventh in the conference in catches per game. Elstrom, the motion man on first down. Shaw's first carry. Rob Meyer leading in solidly. Look at the senior from West Vancouver, British Columbia, as we take a look at the rest of the Cougar defensive unit. Meyer, as we mentioned, a senior playing his final Apple Cup. Randall Smith in at linebacker in place of Steve Gleason. Matson, Meyer, Aliaga moving ahead of Tongaika. Emerson Holden, as Bud mentioned, Gleason not starting. Lamont Thompson gets a start in the secondary after being reserved much of the time. Tuyasasopo scrambling, gets brought down around the ankles. Sonny, that's a play a week ago that Marcus didn't take upfield, so he's looking to go upfield already. He's moving much better this afternoon. I watched him before the game, Todd and Bud, and much better movement this afternoon. However, it appears that one of their other injured players of late, uh, Kurt Cannell, may be down on the field. Cannell battled back a week ago to get into action, and we watched this scramble again by Tui. Well, he just pulled in. No one opened downfield. He was looking for a quick pass that time and just tried to move it upfield and get rid of it. And you saw Cannell get knocked yes. down from behind, cut from behind, and he is still down on the field. Those are the ones that are perhaps the most dangerous on the turf when you get hit from behind and you don't know it's coming. We're going to step aside while... The senior lineman is being attended to. Opening minute of play, Washington with the ball in Washington State Territory. This is the Apple Cup. Back in Seattle, Connell on the sidelines. Wes Call takes his place. Shaw into the pack and continuing to drive him back a couple extra yards. He'll take it inside the 30. And we see the injury again on the last play to Kurt Cannell. Watch right here, guys, on the left-hand side. Right there, you see a great play by Austin Matson coming back, coming off the block of uh, Jeremy Stevens to make a tackle right there on Tuyasa Sopo. And unfortunately, he dove also in the back of Kurt Cannell. Shaw's carry good for a first down for Washington from the 28. Little underneath and behind Shaw. They had the blockers extended on the screen that time. And Marcus threw it behind him. Did a great job of setting up the screen. Yes, they did. Uh, Mo Shaw. But one thing, Bud, when you don't practice a lot, one thing that really hampers you is just a little touch pass. But still, those are things you work out with repetition and practice. And Tuiasa Sofa really hasn't had a chance to do that a lot. Grady Emerson dropping from his linebacker position to cover that time for Washington State. Huskies go with three wide outs. Jarzinka to the bottom. Looker in the slot. Jurgens is wide. Draw to Shaw. Broke the first hand tackle, but the second man tripped him up. That's Curtis Holden in the middle. Holden has just been amazing this year, playing through a, a broken bone in his hand and then a knee injury about a month ago. And 
a junior college transfer from the San Francisco City College program that's stock in the Pac-10 these days. <laughs> the new pipeline for everyone. Rick Neuheisel trying to figure out what to come up with on a third and long situation. Wind at the Huskies' backs right now. Again, plenty of time. Tuiasa Sopo will turn it up. Field got a fake on a man. Is forced out of bounds. Short of the first down. And very close on the hit as well. Torrey Holloman who was, again, to be limited a little bit with a shoulder problem, leading the tacklers. Yeah, this play, Tuiasa Sopo again, but you're going to see this a lot. Nobody open. He does what, this is what he does best is taking off something you can't really plan on defense for, but a little bit of a late hit there. But you see Jurgens going downfield, double covered, and he is perhaps the best deep guy this afternoon and not be able to get open. John Anderson on to attempt a field goal of 38 yards, the first points of the game, and he misses it wide left. Anderson now 12 of 17 for the year and has had more problems with the shorter kicks than he has the longer. So the Cougars bend, including a penalty on the kickoff, but don't break. Washington State will have the ball for the first time when we come back. Washington State takes over at the 21-yard line. Steve Birnbaum calling the plays. First snap there, throws incomplete. Looking out in the flat for Marcus Williams and threw it short behind him. You see Williams trying to tell his senior quarterback to get the ball up in the air. Well, he's a little nervous out there. First pass in the Apple Cup. and There's a flag down on the play as well. You see Steve Birnbaum, 58% completion rate. He's sixth in the conference in passing, seventh in total offense. His rating marking him eighth among the starting quarterbacks, but a great ratio this year, bud, of touchdowns to interceptions. And he's actually moved into the number eight spot all time, passing at Washington State. Just hasn't produced a lot of victories. The penalty flag Holding against... On the defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Against Washington gives them the automatic first down. Rick Neuheisel getting the explanation. But while the teams were changing possessions, you commented, this is the stretch of the game where Washington State is perhaps its most efficient offensively. They've done a very good job when they're on the script, which, as you see, an upset Rick Neuheisel, is usually about 10 plays deep, although Mike Price has hinted at going a little deeper than that. He may have written four volumes. First give of the day for Dion Burnett, the outstanding freshman running back. And Bud, this is our first chance to look at him. I'll have you comment about him in just a moment as we take a look at the rest of the starting lineup for Washington State. 2J Raymond, Walden Schultz, Schwartz, and Raymond. Eight different sets of brothers on the Washington State roster. Burnett, an outstanding year in the backfield, closing in on 1,000. And he is just a great performer. He has been a lot of fun to watch. He's really matured as the season has gone along. Had a stretch of four straight 100-yard games. Bernbaum with time and the quick completion out around the 40-yard line. That one to Nyan Taylor. Washington State's favorite target coming in. The senior who's had an up-and-down campaign. The rest of the uh, starting lineups. And for Washington defensively, Tui Aiea, Triplett, and Issa. Farms, Towns, Daniels, and Williams at the backers. Bontour, Akbar, Williams, and Smith in the secondary as they start the same way they did the last couple of weeks. Taylor didn't run a very good route. He should know where that first down marker is. Left the Cougars inches short. They will pick up the first down. Adam Hawkins, the ball carrier. Hawkins, the red shirt junior from Pendleton, came right out of his shoes, picking up that first down. Watch the left side, guys. It's good blocking up front, but good running. It's really, knows where he, this guy knows where the first down marker is. Yes, and he did. second effort, picked it up for the Cougars. Jeremy Fieldbar with the lead block in front of Hawkins for the first down at the 41. Taylor, the motion man, Huskies blitzing, picked up. Intercepted, Birnbaum throws it underneath, and Jermaine Smith gets his third interception of the year. Sonny, you thought that was one of the big question marks coming in, the defensive pressure the Huskies could put on Birnbaum. Absolutely, the young man, not real mobile, but that time a little play action, and we had the linebackers, both C. Lester Towns getting ready to come, but on the right, just outside the picture, 
is Jeremiah Smith, and watch this right here. He just settles right down, right in that passing lane. That must be something they picked up in watching film. Just a bad read by Steve Birnbaum. Russell Meisen just to the right. You don't see him on the screen. The tight end wide open. Great point, buddy. We saw him on the other replay a moment ago, but the Huskies come up with the first turnover of the game. They will be in Cougar territory for their second possession, looking to get a first score. The Cougars turning the ball over. Washington with it at the 47-yard line, and the Huskies, who drove and missed a field goal attempt at 38 yards by Anderson, will try to head down the field once again. Draw for Shaw again. Big hole right side. He takes it close to the 40. Curtis Holden, the first man to meet him there for Washington State. Lamont Thompson also 19 getting a start today. Mike Price allowing him to start. Good draw play right here. That seems to me this is going to be the bread and butter this afternoon, guys. That three or four times we've seen it already today. Malone Gibbons also coming in on the tackle. I'm just going to say Mo Shaw, senior year, 4.1 yard average, 5 TD, bigger back buds, a little bit more solid in between the tackles. Over the middle into the hands of Stevens and big target in a crowded area as he was closed on quickly. Grady Emerson, Billy Newman on the stop. Stevens has been a big target of Tuiasa Sopo. You see him coming down, just settling in right there and delivering the football. What was really nice about that throw, Todd, as we've seen, Tuiasa Sopo had some mustard on that one, which he didn't have a week ago. Stevens picks up another Washington first down at the 33. Conniff for a couple. Holden on the stop. Good to see Washington State's defense stop a fullback. That is, uh, it's really a strange thing. They do a great job of stopping the, the quick backs outside, but for some reason over the last couple of years, fullbacks have been able to get some good yardage against them, but they were able to make a pretty good stop that time. Conniff is a guy who seems to get yardage almost all the time. In fact, he has not lost a yard rushing the entire season. Well, that's a good play to set up the option if they elect to do that. Making those quick dive plays, linebackers have to respect that, and perhaps the Huskies can sneak outside. First out of the pocket again, Tuiasa Sopa will tuck it upfield. He outruns a couple defenders and picks up another first down before Meyer hauls him down. Sonny, we'll say it again, big difference from a week ago already. Evident. Yeah, I, I'm smiling up here, Todd, because it's something that we didn't see last week. And this young man, as he gets rolling and gets loose and down on the field, you're going to see more plays like this. And, you know, Bill Doba is a fine, fine defensive coordinator, but, but it's really tough to defend and call defenses to defend that. Yeah, it is. You think you have some containment. There he goes. The number two in the Pac-10 rushing, although we wouldn't, wouldn't have known that last week. Yeah, the running game just did not get on track. UCLA did a good job against the option. Shaw carrying here on a little cross play. He'll be close to the 15-yard line. Holden and Meyer again on the tackle for Washington State. Well, you know, the Cougars have had so many different fronts defensively player uh, personnel wise that they're doing a lot of substitution again today but it's really been something the Cougars have had a problem with all year healthy players on defense. that's a fact and they they haven't had the the domination on the defensive line that a lot of people anticipated they would have but they're still playing a lot of very young players Cougars with a little run blitz Tuiasa Sopo dump out of the backfield kind of dropped the ball Troy Holloman Rather, excuse me, Lamont Thompson made the hit and dislodged it from the Husky pullback. Lamont Thompson doing a great job of picking up the man coming to the flat out of the backfield. You'll see right here that he's sneaking through right here. Tui thinks he's wide open, but Lamont Thompson with a great job of coming up in coverage. But a little bit of a motivational start for that young man today. Lamont Thompson was a fantastic safety his freshman and sophomore year. Struggled when they moved him to corner earlier this year and just hasn't been the same player. Slant in, Stevens is open, makes the grab first and goal, Washington. Tuiasa Sopo, a nice read there to find the hot receiver. Well, you called it right there, Todd. One thing that, Look at that war paint, do. Sonny. <laughs> well, he's ready to play this afternoon, I'm telling you. But uh, you know, the linebacker, our defensive back, 
I couldn't quite see the number who was blitzing, but right there you see him blitz, and Stevens wide open for the for the pass reception. Very good job by Tuiasa so far. Found the seams. From just inside the eight. Shaw. Gets about three before he's swarmed under. Cougars are pointing, saying they have the ball. They come out of the pack with it, but no signal from the officials. It'll remain Washington's possession. Yeah, everything stops when you hear all the whistles. The I didn't hear any going. whistles. <laughs> it's like Austin Matson had the ball originally, and we had a couple of no whistles a week ago, too. Well, it's the Pac-10 this year, so anything can happen. <laughs> You see Washington's red zone performance this year. The Cougar defense has been fairly efficient preventing opponents from getting touchdowns. 22 touchdowns and 38 tries inside the red zone, which is a pretty good amount for a defense. Ball pops loose. Tuiasa Sopo picks it up, and he'll be dropped at about the 10. Nice bounce for the Huskies there as Marcus came back with it, but he had nowhere to go, and Matson and Lamont Thompson made sure of that. It's one of the few times, Sonny, we've seen it pop on that dive exchange this year. Well, we've seen him pull it out many times, but right there, not a good handoff, but the big reason appeared to be Rob Meyer, 87, that's absolutely stuffing the fullback as he gets close to the line of scrimmage. Meyer, big, silent, strong guy who can, it's tough to handle one-on-one. -on -one. There again, the numbers for the Washington State defense. 22 TDs, six field goals, but 10 times their opponents have not scored within the red zone. This is a third and goal situation. Draw for Shaw. He'll be stopped short, but a big game there. Another man down on the field for Washington. And it's Connell who had come back in. He is down once again. Decision time. Shaw busting right up the gut there. The secondary able to close in time. Looks like Rick Neuheisel is going to try for the three points. Anderson missed one field goal a week ago from 24 yards out and then nailed a pair of 50 yarders. As we mentioned, Connell down once again on the field and being attended to. Sonny, do you think Rick Neuheisel really knows the Apple Cup? going into this one or do you have to be in one I, obviously he's been in a lot of rivalry games yeah he has but uh, no I don't think the Northwest takes pride in these uh, the Civil War and Corvallis obviously and uh, or wherever that's being played I think it's in Eugene, Eugene this afternoon this week, yeah. but the Apple Cup is a big time state bragging rights and the governor gives the winning team a trophy and that that just doesn't happen down in Los Angeles with UCLA and USC there's a guy who knows a little bit of the history of the Apple Cup going back to even undergraduate days I grew and up before. in the yeah. shadow of Husky Stadium here. Said he used to come down with Dennis Erickson to watch Jim Lambright play. <laughs> well, Pennell you know. being helped once again, and you know uh, every senior wants to be in this battle for as long as is possible. Gleason feeling the same way on the other sideline. The numbers again for Anderson had that school record equaling 56-yard kick a week ago. This one, a 20-yarder, senior Ryan Militich, the holder, and Anderson pops this one through. The Huskies get on the board on their second field goal try, and the freshman, who's definitely got to be a candidate for some freshman All-America honors, hammers that one through from 20. Washington draws first blood in the Apple Cup. Huskies trying to show some stunts again. Anderson with a hanger. Jarzinka with space. Got an illegal block, but the Huskies are going to get away with it, looks like. Dodged a couple, then tackled at midfield. Chupo Chupo on the stop for Washington State. Jermaine Smith with a uh, little push in the back. Got away with it. And the Cougar coaches were all pointing in that direction to no avail. Doesn't count unless there's a flag, bud. You know that. I guess the officials thought there was enough gold or yellow out here already. <laughs> Tuiasa Sopo with 18 yards of rushing thus far. And as we saw earlier in the year, the first quarterback with back-to-back 300-yard -back games since, um, what's his name? Huskies start at their own 48, the Cougar 47, and now the Cougar 49. Great field position. 
And they'll run the draw for Shaw once again. Cougars get a little bit better at stopping it. Tomasi Kungaika, who had lost his starting spot today to Aliaga, the leading tackler on that one. What was that? Kungaika <laughs> and Aliaga. That was pretty good. They've been sharing a lot of time at that uh, tackle position. A Hawaiian and Alaskan. I'll tell you, though, we have Ing Aliaga and his older brother, Ink put in some great years here at Husky Stadium and playing in a few Apple Cups himself. Hopefully he's in attendance this afternoon. But three different guys, oh. including brothers on opposite sides of the ball, we'll tell you about later on. Jerry Zink of the motion man this time. Yeah. Pressure, screen underneath for Shaw. Dodges a couple more tacklers, and early on here, Sonny, Washington's offensive players are able to put some pretty good fakes on the Cougar defenders. Well, you knew coming into the ball game that the Cougars were gonna be very aggressive on defense and come after the quarterback. That time, you see Elliott Silver just kinda let, release his man through, what you do on a screen play, and Maurice Shaw, who can catch the ball very well out of the backfield, with a nifty move, and nice gain for a first down. Couldn't have set that one up much better. Total yards being dominated by Washington thus far. Holden and Smith on the stop for the Cougars on that last one. First down, 36-yard line. Paul Arnold's first carry of the game. He'll pick up five. Both outstanding freshman running backs with 20 on the Cougar side and the Husky side, and the young man from Kennedy High gets his first run. What exciting kickoff return earlier in the year. You see his rushes averaging 4.8. Had a big touchdown run on the option down at Arizona a few games ago, but... That electrifying 100-yard kickoff return versus Air Force was just fantastic. And the wind getting its first effect, blowing the ball across the field from the hash marks. They'll have to go back and re-spot it. They'll get a wheel chop for it if it keeps up. Pressure again on Tuiasa Sopo, gets it away. Juggling grab by Kana, first down inside the 15. Tuiasa Sopo got hammered after he delivered that football. Got sandwiched between a couple of Cougars, but popped right up. Watch here, the offensive line. Here he comes right there. Boom! He just really lowers the boom on Tuyasa Sopo. A little bit of talking afterwards, but that was a pretty clean hit that time by Austin Matson. Offensive lineman, you, if you're going to get by you, boy, it's very tough on the backside. You can't see anyone coming. How about that catch by Conniff reaching back and making a great grab to get the Huskies inside the red zone again? Elstrom, the motion man. Mo Shaw spins through the hands again before Emerson wraps him up at the 10. Newman also there on the stop. Watch the power play up front. Uh, Kyle Ben, 64, Chad Ward. Moses kind of doing his little dance right on through there, and Grady Emerson comes up to make the tackle, bud. But you know, Grady Emerson, as fine a player as he is, is still only 200 pounds, bud. Right. He is a load to bring down, that young man at 6'1", 225, and has some great leg drive as well. He usually is never pushed backwards. Up the middle, open for Tuiasa Sopo. Dives underneath the tacklers wisely that time, as Emerson was starting to close on him, and he'll be close to a first down. The Cougars want to get so many hats on Tuiasa Sopo. Smart move right here again, but we didn't see this a week ago. But right here, you'll see the, <laughs> the Cougars may hurt themselves. Look at the replay, a little pick right there. But by that time, Tuiasa Sopo, it was so slow developing, he had to make a decision, and he did the right thing by taking off with the ball. Third and in inches as Mike Price watches from the Washington State sideline. Rick Neuheisel looking for some power football here for a first down. Pitch to Shaw. Towards the corner. Touchdown, Washington. Took it right over Lamont Thompson. And the Huskies extend their lead. Shaw with his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Sonny, I was a little surprised there. I thought they'd just dive it for that first down, but they opened it up and took six. Well, they've been running it real tough up the middle so far in this first quarter, and apparently the Cougars assumed the same thing, Todd, and the Huskies did the right thing by going outside. That was a nice play that time, and two yachts of soap. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that kid has a smile on his face. 
more than anybody. And for good reason. I tell you, he does. Milicic is doing a great job with these snaps in the wind, as you saw that one hooking away. Anderson adds the extra point. Here's the score again. There's the dive right there, but that pitch, you can see right there that Billy Newman was beat by the time that pitch was made. There was no way that he would to make the play. Good look from behind the Cougar defense here, and there's Newman. You saw that, that slight cut up field, all it took to get him out of position and shot to muscle it into the end zone. This is not something Washington State can afford. As Mo Shaw gets the congratulations on the sidelines, Washington State's offense simply hasn't been productive enough to be able to come from behind. Well, the Huskies want to get out to a quick start this afternoon. I talked to Mo Shaw this week, and he was ready to play. I know I saw him yesterday. And, hey, this is his senior year. It's the last game at Husky Stadium, Apple Cup, and he wants to make sure he does well today. Keith Gilbertson bringing the running back in for a little huddle with the rest of the offensive unit. You know, that's kind of a key right there. You see Rick Neuheisel, but Keith Gilbertson, the offensive line coach, bringing over the running back and telling him how they're blocking certain things. Bud, you made an interesting point a moment ago, and it, it's atypical to say of a Mike Price team that they don't have sufficient offense to come from behind. That's been a tough thing to overcome this year as the Cougars bring the kick back over the 25-yard line. Best field position they've had on this, their third drive. Not much offense, though. 18 yards, and you see the scoring drive. Almost three and a half minutes. The Huskies moving down the field. Shaw's score. Birnbaum with the screen pass. Washington State's best play and more. Burnett. Can he break away? Lester Towns hauls him down inside the 10-yard line and saves the score. But we see some of the abilities again of the freshman running back for Washington State. Play Does not have great breakaway speed, but he is elusive early on. And the Cougars will certainly take that down to the nine and see if they can generate some offense and sneak back into this. Watch Jeremiah Farms on the outside. You cannot let that happen to you. And it happened to him twice, allowing Burnett to streak down the sidelines. Good blocking by the Cougars, bud, on that play. Looked like Lincoln Walden shows it through the block downfield. Yep, and Mike Schwartz with another one as they got through the Husky secondary. Whistles blow before the Cougars can get this snap away, and we have come to the end of the first quarter. So Washington State comes up with a little wrinkle, takes it 48 yards, and the Cougars will have it first and goal when we start the second quarter of play at Husky Stadium. The Cougar fans have something to cheer about with 15 minutes in the books. The start of the second quarter at Husky Stadium, Washington State will have the ball first and goal as we resume play. Imperative for the Cougars to put the ball in the end zone here. Look at the time of possession. That's been a favorite stat for the Huskies this year, but they really dominated it. And of course, 48 of those 65 Washington State yards of total offense came on just the one play a moment ago on the toss to Burnett. Burnett is out, Hawkins in the backfield. Probably a passing play in this situation with that substitution. And a check off by Birnbaum. Huskies backpedaling. Guns it, incomplete. Little contact, but no flag as he tried to find Williams. Not a very good thrown ball that time by Birnbaum. Not a very catchable ball. And Cougars have been adept in this situation, Sonny. Have thrown the little fade, the timing route. Marcus Williams is 6'5", Nyan Taylor about 6'1", and the ability to get up in the air. Yeah, Marcus Williams is huge, 6'5". You don't throw him the fade where he's lined up here, though. No. Burnett is back in the backfield. And he'll get the ball, take it inside the five-yard line. Triplett and Daniels leading the tacklers, along with some help from Curtis Williams in the secondary. Only time the Cougars have not scored when they were in the red zone was last week against USC. They had a first and goal. When, when technically they didn't score, Technically right? they didn't yeah. score. <laughs> Cougars would argue that Jeremy Thielbar had the football into the end zone. The officials did not agree, however. That's an amazing number, though, 24-25 and a 7-1 to touchdown to field goal ratio. Burnett, pressure came off the corner, and he went nowhere. Roderick Green was coming in before the snap. And there was absolutely nowhere for Deion Burnett to turn. Boy, that tells me that there's not a lot of confidence in this young man throwing the football down here in the red zone. Well, they've been proficient with that, that fade, as I mentioned. I think maybe they're trying to cross the Huskies up a bit, but obviously it didn't work. Well, it didn't cross Lester Towns up too much right there in that display. 
Green turned Burnett right into Towns. There he is. Ryan Lindell on to attempt the field goal. Kareem Anderson, the punter, is the holder. 22-yard attempt is good. Washington State gets its first points of the game. The senior from Mountain View High School in Vancouver, Washington, gets Washington State on the board. The Huskies 10, the Cougars 3, more of the Apple Cup after this. Apple Cup skies, as expected. You never know when this one will end in a downpour or something else by the time the game finishes up. There's still a chance of snow. <laughs> With the optimistic Bud Namick and Sonny Six Killer, I'm Todd Pickett. And we welcome you back to Husky Stadium midway through the second quarter. Guys in purple with a, a few more smiles right now with a 10-3 lead, although on this penalty, the Huskies will start out inside their own 10-yard line, which, of course, gives them the chance to run another one of those great clock possession drives they've been famous for this season. Arnold. Cougars missed an arm tackle on him and then brought him down just outside the five-yard line as they put a little upfield pressure and Aliaga made the stop. Very critical for the young running back to make sure he hangs on to that football because they, the Cougars are definitely going to try and strip it. But Paul Arnold, it's nice to see as a freshman in this Apple Cup get a taste of this rivalry, bud. And it's, uh, it'll stay with him the rest of his life. Got some young guys on both sides of the football that are going to have a chance to play in this Three more years. Yeah. A check off again at the line of scrimmage. Throwing a little fade this time is Tuiasa Sopo for Looker incomplete. And a nice job defensively for Washington State by another one of those yep. freshmen, bud. This kid's going to be a heck, actually is a heck of a player. I think he got a hold on the Huskies, and the Cougars might think of declining this one, I think. Marcus Trufant with the coverage on this one. You bet he's fired up, young man from Tacoma. Another receiver downfield on the offense. Penalty is refused. Down will be three. You heard the call again from Jay Strikers, ineligible downfield, and Washington State electing to turn that one down as well. Now, Sonny with a seven point lead against your own goal line. How conservative does Rick Neuheisel get here? I would think he would be very conservative. Pound it away straight ahead. Try and pick up three, four, five yards and allow your punter enough room to catch the ball and get off a good solid kick. Cougar fans making a little noise here now. Well, sure, they all live over here. Hoping for a defensive stop. That's why it's so crowded in the Seattle Center. Yeah, I know. Well, they're going to go deep instead. Batted, incomplete. Stevens was the intended target, and Washington State had him pretty well covered that time. Billy Newman had a chance to intercept that ball, and it was thrown so hard it went through his hands, and almost an opportunity for a Husky catch. Almost a big turnover. I, I did believe they'd be a little more conservative, but right here, trying to knife it through in there, boys. I tell you, Billy Newman was in great position, bud. Huskies, again, very lucky, no turnover. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, just two of six passing in the second quarter so far. High snap grab and the kick away, but it's going to be a very short one. Give big time credit, however, to Ryan Fleming for a save there. Did a great job to get that kick away. Washington State, though, with great field position, and they'll have to take advantage of it now. Watch the snap. Great job of feeling the ball and getting rid of it. it looked right right there that number 41, Zabini could have been in a chance to block that thing. Smart play on his part just to make sure he didn't run into the kicker yep. at all. But Cougs have done that once this year and learned their lesson. Fleming took that one to the side. It's interesting that that, up oh, spare helmet somewhere. It's been interesting thus far that the team having the most problems with the snaps is the home team, the Huskies. Nice play fake. Birnbaum hesitated, then finally delivered the pass to Henderson, and he'll be close to first down yardage on that play. Boy, heck of a downfield block by Nyan Taylor that time. Birnbaum slings this one away. He was lucky. <laughs> a lot of pressure that time to be trying to throw the ball downfield. A lot of Husky defenders in that end zone, but Big Mac Tuiaea gets back there with Birnbaum that time. 
And that was just kind of casually tossed up for grabs though that time. It's one of those a uh, coach likes to see about uh, five yards over everybody's head. <laughs> Hit the band in the, on the track. Yeah. And I guess on a second and short, that was a time to go ahead and look for a little razzle dazzle. Now though, they need to convert the first down. Hawkins. And it's gonna be real close depending on what kind of a spot. And it depends on whether it's one. a left foot or a right foot. I think they've got just enough for it that time. Washington's run defense though has been very impressive as they've bottled up alleys. Yes, they have. Right here, good job again by this young running back. <laughs> Curtis Williams just lowering his head trying to take him out, which he did, and very close spot this time. That's 10 carries for eight yards for Washington State. Okay, then we have one up there. Sticks coming out, that's why we're waiting as you get another look at Hawkins, and just enough. <laughs> Spotted at the 17 yard line and the short yardage unit will check back out. Dilbaro with another uh, lead block there. Dilbaro and Hawkins will have a little chat about it on the sidelines. Trips to the right for the Cougars now on first down. Henderson in motion. They'll toss quickly to him. Juggles, batted, grabbed by Farns. Breaks a tackle, he could go. It's gonna be a foot race now. I think the Huskies are offside though. Jeremiah Farms in the end zone. There is a flag down on the near sideline and what a break for Washington State this could be. Bud, Colin Henderson took his eyes off the ball and watched the defenders and it nearly cost his team. Well, it still may have cost him. We haven't seen which way the penalty's gonna go well, yet. The Cougar coaches are all standing up like a third base coach on Steve Farrington's team and waving everybody back down the field. Yeah, as are the Husky coaches, and yeah. there's the call. Yeah, it appeared Jabari Issa jumped off sides. Unfortunate on that lateral pass. For a minute, I thought Garo Yapremian had made an appearance on the field. He was batting the ball around so much. How about that? Instead of the Huskies having a 17 to three lead, Offside the Cougars. On the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. Have it first and five at the 12. Watch right there, Jabari Issa, 95. You could tell, but he was going on the snap count, not watching the ball. And right here, Jeremiah Farms and Jermaine Smith. Last week we saw illegal touching, Todd. This week that was a pretty good job to keep it in play and keep it active. That's because the special teams weren't involved, uh, yeah, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> and Farms sprinted down the sideline, but will not get credit for the score. As Bud mentioned, a big break for Washington State. They spot it at the 12. Go team! Go Cougars! Well, Cougars even gained an extra yard on that. They spot it at the 11 now. Now time being called by the officials. No, by Washington is the signal. A lot of confusion on that defensive side. You see Tom Williams explaining to Rick Neuheisel what was the problem. So Cougs get six yards on that penalty and they have a first and four now. Dion Burnett, one touchdown away on the ground from tying the Cougar record for rushing touchdowns in a season held by Steve Broussard and Sean Bay right there. Not only do they get six yards on the penalty, they keep six points off the board with that big break and the Cougar band uh, doing its best to keep warm as well. Well, we said Apple Cup weather can be kind of strange, but this is a weather and situation that Cougar fans remember well. The skidding touchdown catches Drew Bledsoe led the Cougars to a victory in Pullman in 1992. The thing that was amazing about that game is a week after that, I was back in Alabama doing a Cougar basketball game, and the very first SEC championship game was played the next day at Soldier Field, or at uh, Legion Field, and uh, we had a chance to watch that, and a couple of guys I was with were wearing Cougar stuff, and all these people in Alabama were just, hey, we saw that game on TV in the snow. They had they didn't remember anything else but the snow. No, they remember yeah. the snow. <laughs> they remember the Cougars won. Yeah. Yeah. What was the team again? <laughs> Williams and Henderson to the right. Burnett, not much at all. 
Issa on the stop. Towns was there and Triplett turned him upfield. Todd, you talked about the run defense of the Huskies. Let's watch the way they get off the ball. Right there, Triplett just flying around his man from the Cougars. It seems like the quickness of the D line is just that much better so far today. And with all the tackles for loss, the Cougars still don't have 10 yards rushing for the half. Here's the fade. Bud called it, toss for Taylor, broken up. Excellent coverage that time by Omari Lowe. May have hit him in the back of the helmet, but I'm not sure if he'd have made the grab if his feet would have come down in the end zone anyway, Bud. This is the fade you were talking about, yep. though. They've used it all year. And what a great athlete to have out there on the other end. And if he could have corralled it, his foot would have been down. Yes, he would have. Low doing a good job of avoiding any interference. And I think if Birnbaum throws that one a little deeper, it's an easier catch for Taylor as well. So after having a first and four, the Cougars are faced with a third and three. And they'll throw again. Trying to set up a screen. Dumped out into the flat and caught by Arnold, but I think for negative yardage, or rather Burnett, excuse me, for negative yardage on the completion. Yeah, Daryl Daniels had that one snuffed all the way. Came, comes up a little gimpy after the play. The screen has worked today for both teams, and it's particularly for the Cougars with that long one. But watch right down here, you're gonna see Daryl Daniels sniffing it out right there. Good play, wait, good job of fighting through the offensive blockers. Lindell on to attempt another field goal. This one will be spotted just outside the 18 yard line by Anderson. And Lindell nails his second of the game, his ninth of the season. And the Cougars close to within four. But victory for the Huskies by keeping the Cougars out of the end zone. Very much so, after, especially after that nice non-touchdown to come back and hold them to three. Good job by the Huskies. And to hold him without a first down after they had had first and short situation. As we said before, brother stories, the Aliagas and the Hollemans among them with uh, sons on both sides of the ball. That one breaks the plane of the goal line and will go as a touchback as Arnold, a smart choice there, electing to let it go. Of course, we had the Meisen brothers who were squaring off. Cougar fans celebrating as their team has hung with it so far here in the first half. Now there's a nice move by the Cougs. Now Sonny. Now Sonny. <laughs> I've spoken like a true Coug over there. <laughs> All right. Time for the Huskies. I wondered how much mediation I was going to have to do today. First <laughs> and ten at the 20-yard line. Arnold. Good cut back there to get extra yardage. A smart, smart read by Arnold, and he's brought down from behind by Austin Matson. Outside of that touchdown run, really tied against Arizona a couple weeks ago. That's a nifty run that time by the freshman. Look at the line surge right there. When you can knock those defensive players off the ball three yards, your running back's going to have a pretty good opportunity to run with the football, and that time. Paul Arnold does just that. You saw Austin Matson at the end of the play saying, you know, if they would have let go of my jersey, I could have come back and tackled him a little sooner. The Boy. Husky Lion holding him up. Stevens with a good block on him and another first down for Washington. Outside, good sliding grab by Jurgens, and the guy who runs such great routes comes up with another one there and made a good catch in front of Marcus Trufant. Sonny, the spot where it can't be defended, and that's where Jurgens is at his best. We've seen Tuyasha Sopo throw the out route extremely well this year. This time he just rifles it out there. And Chris Jurgens, but as you know, when you have your, your leading receiver, your go-to kind of guy down for a couple weeks, that makes it awful tough as a quarterback. I'm sure Tuyasha Sopo is happy about that, as is Birnbaum having Nyan Taylor picking it up. Catching the ball again. Absolutely. Huskies again going without Gerald Harris so far this week as he has just not been able to bounce back since his thigh injury of a couple weeks ago. Looker the motion man, quick toss to him. He's looking downfield, wide open is Joe Jarzinka. Touchdown for Jarzinka in his final game in Husky Stadium. Just took a page out of the Cougar playbook. <laughs> Dane Looker's first pass and a pair of seniors hook up for the score. Well, I knew coming in that Colin Henderson for the Cougars has thrown, and I saw Dane Looker practice that this week in practice. 
I was trying to determine which one would throw the pass first. This time, Huskies do a fine job of fooling the Cougars on this play. Boom, he's gone down the sidelines. And I tell you, for this young man that's done so much for this program, what a big day to score. The extra point from Anderson is good. Looker to Jarzinka on the score. Momentum comes squarely back with the Huskies. They lead it 17 to six. Kick in the air as the Cougars take it downfield. Another solid tackle there. New return man as well as Nyan Taylor bringing the kick back that time as we get a look at that basketball playing guy from Western Washington who now has become a quarterback as well. And there's a flag down at the end of that kick play. You see the scoring drive and a quick one of 80 yards. Jarzinka on the 55 yard touchdown catch. And I think with the possible exception of me, any of the three of us could have caught that one and strolled in. He was so wide open. <laughs> yeah, That's play there. the Cougars used it a week ago and they bit big time on it. Yeah, it's like the Husky coaches saw it on film, but I said, hey, that's a pretty yeah. darn good play. Let's do it. Encroachment on the kicking team, five-yard penalty, previous spot. We're going to re-kick. That was the first time Nyan Taylor's returned to kick this year. See Dane Looker setting up right here, delivering the football, and Joe Jarzinka had just blown by LaJuan Gibbons and scampers into the end zone. Joe the toe going in smartest thing that looker did it, his form wasn't great but he got it there in a hurry knowing that joe was wide open still made an accurate toss it was a spiral oh yeah we've seen far worse <laughs> he didn't plant and get the, the the classic there is what this husky team has done with long drives and they've had them at several key times throughout the season that's a pretty impressive number a lot of yards remember the big one a few weeks ago of 90 yards when they needed it against Arizona. Yeah, Joe. I don't think you had that many moves there, buddy. <laughs> Didn't need him. <laughs> See Dane right there. Yeah, it was his motion. Anderson getting set to kick once again as the ball gets blown off the tee. I think what Looker was saying is, Joe, I look just like Sonny Six Killer when I threw that one. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm going to have a higher quarterback efficiency rating. I think that Damon Hewitt and Brock Hewitt helped him with that throw. Nettles and Taylor back for the Cougars, and they'll kick again to Taylor's side. Washington State should benefit a little bit better from field position this time. Bounces off a couple tacklers, nearly stretched it out. He got over the 40-yard line before he was brought down by John Anderson. That was interesting. Look again at the senior from Riverside, California. Nyan Taylor, though, but has not been back on kickoffs much this season. And, First right. time we've seen him. Good job at juking and getting some good yardage on that kickoff. Big break for the Cougars after the penalty. And the Cougars make a change at quarterback. Jason Gesser will come out. He has missed several weeks with a hand injury and gets his first taste of Apple Cup action. Nothing like warming him up. He was looking to throw, but will sprint out instead and takes it nearly out to midfield. Bud, what does he bring to the Cougar attack? What you just saw right there. He has ability to move. Young man out of Honolulu, Hawaii. Very excited that the Cougs are playing in Honolulu next week. He was about to become the starter when he went down with the injury against Arizona and was just really starting to get a grasp of the offense. And uh, this is an offense that simply you have to get some snaps to, to be able to be efficient at it. You can't get it done in practice. He's had plenty of time to study the playbook, but Mike Price said, I just wanted to give him a taste of what it's like to play in Husky Stadium. He gives to Burnett, who will be just short of the first down as again, Washington's front line contains the run well. Towns and Daniels lead the tacklers. Cougar coaches love the work ethic of Jason Gesser. He, when the hand was in a cast, he was still doing cardio work, was up watching all the film he could to, to continue to try to learn as much as he could so he'd be ready when he was able to come back physically. Bud, what's the possibility that, as we see Birnbaum on the sidelines, this is also an evaluation for Gesser for next week? Oh, I'm sure it's very much a part of the picture. Short yardage, boom, solid shot there. And again, that's gonna depend on this spot as Lester Towns meets and greets Adam Hawkins. 
<laughs> big, <coughs> excuse me, big hit by Lester Towns, but Adam Hawkins does a good job of getting the needed yardage for the first down. Following his blocking up front, see the big Raymond, Ryan Raymond, head to head, but maybe Adam Hawkins will remember that later on in the ball game. I bud. think he will. <laughs> I don't know, the guy from Pendleton, he's tough. Got just enough, that guy's pretty tough as well. Washington State now 20 yards rushing on 14 carries. They aren't gonna add to it at all as Jabari Issa wraps Burnett up. It's a great job by Issa that time. Burnett was gonna try to cut that back just like Paul Arnold did. Arnold was able to turn it into a 14 yard gain, but Issa right there to prevent Burnett from going anywhere. Well, that was a true wrap up that time by Issa on the play and Burnett looks a little frustrated. You see Jabari Issa on the right just knifing through there and just picking him up around the waist and throwing him to the ground. And a host of Huskies on that play, bud. Not much there from the offensive line. A look at the senior from Foster City, California. Huskies again showing some pressure. Guesser scrambling away. Tui Aiea will drag him down at the 50-yard line. So much pressure from the corners today, Sonny. Yes, they have been doing it all day. Against the Cougar passing attack coming in with that multiple receiver set, you're going to have nickel and dime packages, five or six defensive backs in there, and you can afford to send some speed after your quarterback. Cougars not only need the first down, they need to get in motion in a hurry if they're going to score before the break. But the young kid looking downfield, no one opened that time, Bud, downfield. They had two receivers out there, but no one opened. They need to get to the Washington 38-yard line. From the gun, pressure backside, he gets away from that. There's just no one open for Gesser. Still's gonna force one in and it's incomplete. Omari Lowe was the closest man to it. There's a flag down in the Cougar backfield for holding more than likely. Marcus Williams was the intended receiver on the play. That was all individual effort as he scrambled to keep it alive. Williams did a nice job trying to come back and almost got there. The illegal downfield against Washington State. Well, you, you certainly can see the talent of this young man, though, but right here, looking to his left, no on one the open, offense. much Family like Tui Asasopo, trying to do something and getting outside the pocket is very dangerous. And that's a good point. He has that similar type of mobility, I think, Sonny. Yes, you're kind of starting to see that a little more and more in college football. Certainly mm -hmm. on the eastern part of the states, you see it quite a bit. The ineligible downfield is declined. Washington State will punt. Jarzinka back to wait for the punt of Kareem Anderson. His numbers for today, he averages about 41 a kick for the year. Trying to kick to a corner, Jarzinka will let it bounce. It'll go out of bounds. Washington will have the football at its 17 yard line with a little more than a minute to go in the first half of play. The Huskies lead the Cougars in the Apple Cup. Back at Husky Stadium, the closing minutes of the first half. Washington State trailing Washington. The Huskies with better than two to one margin in total offense right now. Conniff carrying on that one as the Huskies have piled up 214 yards of total offense prior to that play to the Cougars 103. Pat Conniff just pounding away up the middle, going behind Chad Ward, the big guard for the dogs. Right now with, uh, what, 40-some seconds to go, bud? Or a minute to go, I should say. Well, you can see time flies when you're having fun. Our clock is catching up. 37 seconds left in the, uh, in the first half. Huskies looking like they're just going to be content to take the lead in the locker room. One more dive into the line by Arnold. And our first live time-lapse photography. <laughs> Timeout called by Washington State. So an interesting call there. And try to force the Huskies into having to punt it. Cougars have blocked a couple of punts and now, this year. Now we put it back on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and we're at 22. So, uh, yeah, they'll have to do that. And one more and then have uh, just a little bit of time remaining. Bill Doba 
trying to keep Washington contained in this one. Now there's a defensive coordinator you don't normally see but on the sidelines both mm -hmm. the coordinators are up in the box but he really likes it on that sideline he's close to his players. He does a great job. Come up with some good schemes for Washington State. And they'll play some young guys that hopefully will translate into success in the future. Well, we wait for another play, a flashback to the 1996 game in Pullman, and perhaps the most exciting finish and the uh, first overtime finish between these two teams. Well, I remember this play, Chad Carpenter, one foot just barely out. And Washington came up with a victory over the Cougars in overtime by the narrowest of margins on that call, Jim Lambright's. Last Apple Cup victory. Pat Connor carrying. He's short of the first down. The Cougars will burn another timeout. Yep. Horse the Huskies to kick it. Kirk Neuheisel doesn't seem too pleased. It'd be interesting, Sonny, to see what Washington State does at halftime now with apparently Jason Gesser going to be the guy at quarterback. What sort of changes they will make and the bottom line is they've, they've got to be able to run the football better if they're going to have any offensive success in the second half. Yeah you've got to be able to run the football if not that Husky defense can just tee off and as we mentioned with five or six DBs in there they have enough speed to get to the quarterback. Burnbaum continuing to throw on the WSU sidelines. Price with a quick holler at his unit, waiting to see whether or not the Huskies would send the punt team out onto the field. Fleming on. The Cougars will put ten men, well, make it nine really on the uh, line of scrimmage, and they'll back off and cover the outside, so they're not really showing a possible punt rush per se as Henderson stands back deep. In fact, they're backing their outside guys to clear off on the line of scrimmage. Nearly got it. They hit Fleming. There's the flag, so it's not going to matter anyway. Henderson trying to find the sideline and, and stop the clock. Well, Fleming they had nothing to lose. Fleming's still down. Now you see him finally picking himself up. The only one that had something to lose was Ryan Fleming. Yeah. On roughing the kicker. Good brush that time, getting the ball off, Fleming does, but that's a real dangerous spot, though, too, with your leg extended to get hit that way. Whoa. Lamont Thompson in there low. Took the bad angle. Personal Fleming appears foul, to be okay. rubbing the kicker on the defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot. Automatic first down. That's right? a tough situation for a punter right there because you know they're going to come no matter what. And I just hate to see the helmet of the opposing player anywhere down near that kneecap. Fleming appears to be none the worse for their wear. We'll hope that that's the case. As his fellow kicker, Anderson, is over there with him. They'll march the ball out above the 40-yard line for the Huskies, and we'll see if they elect to try anything at all. They, in the pro set, appear to just be ready to down it and head into the locker room at halftime. Now Marcus calls a timeout. <laughs> that's the Apple Cup. Let's yeah. have some fun. How about a little... Uh, Pretend to take an E and then stand up and <laughs> throw it long. Why not? Yeah, we might as well Seen see that, that too. too yeah. <laughs> Steve Axman going. Oh, I don't have anything for a four-second, fifty-yard. Yeah, let's see. Let's, um, let's, what can I do? Flip right. the card over a few times. It's getting relatively dry, thankfully right now at Husky Stadium and the wind has died down a bit as well. I saw Steve Entman I look at that flag there from 91 and saw big Steve yesterday in the coaches offices and I tell you he's been working out real hard and uh, Gilby was Keith Gilbertson was kidding that he's going to come back as a lineman offensive lineman now. <laughs> They're working in, on some technique in Gilby's office. So we'll see now they've changed the backfield set to the eye with Conniff and Arnold. And uh, after all that, including the timeout, <laughs> uh, there'll be 
be content to take it into the locker room at halftime. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo in the first half, eight of 14 passing. The biggest pass of the half was thrown by Dane Looker. It was the bomb to Jarzinka on the flea flicker that helped the Huskies extend the lead. At halftime, Washington 17, Washington State 6. Husky fans excited, they have the lead at halftime, 17-6 over Washington State. As the Huskies look to post their seventh win of the season, we welcome you back to the Apple Cup as the rains begin to fall a little bit more at Husky Stadium. We take a look at some of our first half highlights and Washington got the first score. Big play on the goal line, the option of course to Mo Shaw outboxing the Cougar defensive call that time. Marcus Tuiasosopo has taken his lumps but he's bounced back. <laughs> That's a big lump right there. Jesse Ratcliffe coming in and lowering the boom on him. And right here, the Husky defense has just been a little bit quicker than that Cougar offensive line and coming up with some big stops. Sunny. That's been the story of the first half. Yep, then the big turning point right here. Well, this is an awfully big turning point with Dane Lucker's throw to Joe the toe Jarzinka. And Jarzinka just absolutely outrunning Lawan Gibbons, so it's fooled on the play. Cougars have just had some momentum, but they've only managed to get two field goals on the board thus far. And from a statistical standpoint, Washington has pretty well dominated, although the Cougars held on to the ball for the majority of the second quarter. Second quarter, but not a lot of points, and only 103 yards in the first half with all those losses added or subtracted from their total. But the Huskies, again, coming out in good, solid rushing yards, and the key is the passing of Marcus. Bud, straight ahead blocking usually is a hallmark for any offensive line. Are you surprised the Cougars with 16 carries, 18 rushing yards? Yeah, the, the running game has been sporadic this year, but they have usually managed to get something done. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Jason Gesser as the quarterback, I would presume, to start the second half. And I'm sure that's something Rick Neuheis will talk to his guys about. And that's got to be a little tough for them because, again, they don't have much tape of Gesser to go back and review since the early part of the season. You see him 17 on the left of your picture right there. But they do know from the couple of plays he was in in the first half, he is a little more mobile than Steve Birnbaum, and he's not afraid to run it. And much as the Huskies have relied on some rushing from their quarterback through the year, the Cougars may need that as well. Washington State with the early pick. They did not give any points up to the Huskies on that one. The, uh, or rather the three, excuse me, thank you, bud. Two field goals for the Cougars, and they've had good field position, but they have not been able to generate much at all. No, not sustaining anything, and uh, early on, the field position was not very good. Then it got better, but the Huskies had great field position to get things started. Yes, they did, but they came away on that first eight play, 31 yards with a missed field goal, but coming back with the Dane Looker pass and the most shot touchdown run. Again, after starting near midfield on their first three, the average, thanks to the one deep one in particular, at their own 31. Curtis Nettles, Nyan Taylor are back deep for Washington State. As John Anderson gets set to kick off for Washington. Again, they'll drill it for Taylor, this one back deep, and he'll let it sail over his head and into the end zone. And the Cougars will start at the 20-yard line. Well, it looks like it might be Steve yep, Birnbaum coming back say, at quarterback. He's conferring with Mike Price. And it will be Birnbaum to open the third quarter. Again, a situation where the Cougars are back on the script. So we'll see if Steve Birnbaum is able to get anything going as you see his numbers so far today. Had the one early pick where he forced it. But he has had to scramble a lot in the early going. The Cougars empty the backfield. Towns giving defensive signals. They'll run the quick screen to Henderson, and they really caught Washington, I think, off guard there on that first down play. Quick snap that time and not allowing the linebackers to get out in coverage that time with the three receivers to the near side, Todd. It's a good way you want to start the second half if you're a Cougar. Right there, good job of tying up the DB. Little missed block by Taylor, or they might have sprung it for even further yardage as he missed the assignment there. But it was obvious to see Washington was trying to adjust on the fly on that one. And Washington State gets a first down. Burnett's carrying the ball. There you see the scramble in the pile as well as the Huskies say they have it. Towns came out, and the officials all indicating down by contact. 
<laughs> Lester trying to make another big play. Birnbaum checking the play card. Now, Bud, you mentioned the offense going back to the script. Do they do that often in the second half? Yes, always do it. That script meaning predetermined plays in a sequence. Again, five in the pattern as Taylor flexes out. And they'll run a little flip motion again. That is Hawkins who came clear across the field in motion and took that little toss. Amari low down on the sidelines after making the stop. He appears to be uh, staying down for the time being. And the Huskies also playing without Anthony Von Tour right now, who has been bothered by a groin injury throughout the week. See the receiver going all the way across the field, and you're right, Omari Lowe may have landed on his left arm or his side. It's hard to tell from that angle, but you know, the Cougars like a lot of motion, bud, and the throw back and throw to the flats. See what kind of a play call they come up with here on third and about three yards. And they simply have not been able to run it well enough to think that you can put it on the ground and pick it up. Landing hard on that cold artificial turf. May have hurt his left shoulder. Amari Lowe is still down on that near sideline. We will step aside while he's being attended to a minute gone in the third quarter. Cougar fans trying to, well, no, that's not a Cougar fan. It's a it's whole Hogan. wrestler disguised as a, yeah. <laughs> They're trying to rip him up as we're early in the third quarter. Wasted a lot of good money on that shirt. <laughs> Disposable income, I guess. Cougars looking at a third down situation here and a little over three yards. And just under 45% on their third down conversions so far today. The Cougars are next to last in that statistical category for the year in the Pac-10 Conference. Birnbaum throwing a long out. It flutters and is caught. Wow, I'm still trying to figure out how that got to Marcus Williams. He seemed to be waiting for an eternity for that and gets the first down catch. Watch Williams right here. He's a big guy, as we mentioned in the first half, 6'5", but that took forever yes, to get there. Roderick Green with a little bit better closing right there would have been able to knock that ball down. Didn't react that well to the ball. Marcus, a big game last week against USC. And again, the Cougars break out of the backfield, they've got four to the left, and again, Hawkins is the motion man. Quick toss out again, Good Henderson. Block. He'll take it down close to first down yardage. Omari Lowe on the tackle there. And a look again at the freshman from Puyallup. This guy is going to catch a lot of passes before his Cougar career is over. Well, he's got that blood in him, doesn't he, bud? Yes, That's, he does. Uh, his father played quarterback for the Cougs, and right there, Saw a nice block on Curtis Williams, allowing Henderson to pick up some big yardage. Give him nine officially. And on short yardage, Issa from behind brings Hawkins down. Sonny, I don't know a game this year where we've seen Washington's front be able to get through the offensive line as well as they've done today. Well, they've done a tremendous job getting off the ball. And one thing about WSU is they're very big up front. They've got a lot of size. And it may take them a little bit longer to, once that ball snapped to get going. And, and we've seen it all year. Jabari Issa, for a big man, has great quickness. From a third and less than a yard, it's now third and four. And there's oops, motion up front as we come back. Bit of a collision. You see, uh, Larry Triplett wasn't very happy with himself at all. Walden Schultz with the grin. Dead ball, offside by contact on the defense. I think Five it's yard be penalty. Interesting to see whether this is a momentum shift at all for the Cougars because they've had a lot of difficulty picking up the third down so far today on the third and shorts. Well, this they just picked up the last one, but they would have had to try that same long pass that can result in disaster. They just they have not been able to do it with any kind of power football at all. So let's see what they do now, given the first, whether they're able to be a little bit more explosive now. Meisen and Taylor flexing out. Hawkins again, who's running wind sprints each play. Little dump over the middle, incomplete. Daniels with the coverage. Got a hand around on Henderson, and now a late flag thrown from way in the backfield. 
The first flag thrown was from the sidelines and I'm very late and I'm not sure how he could have seen this play. He'd have to look through the backs of the players. And the only thing I can think of, Sonny, is they're going to call some backhand pressure on the backside of Henderson if the call is going there. Two penalties on the play. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. Pass interference on the defense. Penalties offset. Replay. We've first had that down. happen on both teams today. I can't first remember so many here. ineligible downfield guys. Well, it's happened twice now to Washington State. I don't can't see on that replay little bit of a shirt might be grab maybe there. there but yeah well he got rid of the ball quick enough bud and I didn't see how alignment could possibly be downfield especially given the last point you made about how slow the Cougar line yeah. are at getting off the ball yeah. well that well, was a little bit of a grab early but that so was a bit ticky tack do it all over again Husky's showing some blitz pressure in the corners. Now they back up again. Birnbaum checking off. And they'll run a draw with Hawkins. Nowhere to go. He just bangs up against his own lineman. Triplet was occupying the gap. And that is going to put the Cougars back under a yard per rush average once again. Here it is. The defensive front just blowing up the blocking scheme for the Cougars. You watch on the left side, you've got 74. 2J trying to block, but no success there. Washington State last in the conference and rushing at only 105 yards a game. They go to the air and throw the out route to Taylor incomplete. Went to his knees to make the catch. And I don't know if it just slipped through or if it was short hopped. Well, it's pretty wet down there. Look at the rain coming down, but it's, uh, it's just, by the time that ball gets snapped and the quarterback gets it and rifles it out there, it's got some moisture on it, but let's see how low it is. Uh, it looked like it came off his pad. Yeah, it did. Get a better look here, perhaps. At least at the throw and the reaction. So a third and long again for Washington State. Birnbaum now 11 of 17 passing and running for his life. Hold on the play. Thrown up and dropped. Lowe had the interception on an ill-advised pass by Birnbaum. None of it would have mattered from a Cougar reception standpoint, and the Huskies will decline the holding penalty. <laughs> Omari Lowe is going to kick himself after the game. These are drills that they work on, is reaching your highest point with your hands and making the grab, but not able to come up with it. If the Huskies decline this penalty, which they're showing that indication of the sideline, I wouldn't be surprised to see Washington State go for it here. You're not going to gain much. On the offense, penalty is declined. Down will be four. They bring Kareem Anderson in. He has run for a first down, one fake punt earlier this year. Just outside the range of Lindell, who has a good leg, but it would be a 57-yard field goal, and you see Anderson's numbers. He's not been great at kicking it out of bounds in this situation inside the 20. And over end, bouncing, could not keep it in the field of play. The attempt by Zubidi unsuccessful. Anderson did what he could, but it'll go as a touchback. Washington will have it at the 20 when we return. Drops continuing in intensity at Husky Stadium as we move along in the third quarter of play. Starting to get standing water as well. Washington with the ball at the 20 yard line. Shaw on the draw. It may be the mantra in the second half as he picks up a couple that time. Rob Meyer leading the tacklers along with Austin Matson. If this weather continues to deteriorate, I wouldn't be surprised to see Rick Neuheisel run that a bit more. Well, it's uh, coming into the ballgame. They wanted to run the football and keep that time of possession in their favor. And one way to do it is do the draw. But you kind of have to get the ball to them a little bit quicker. Sometimes the, the Cougars are reacting to that draw pretty well and stopped it for, for short gains. You have to give the Cougars uh, some credit as well. They are not one of the better rush defenses in the conference. But so far, they've held the Huskies to just 90 yards rushing in the game. Shaw once again and for a little yardage. Holden swir swarming to the ball along with Meyer. Rob Meyer guy was a 
number one pick in the CFL draft and hoping to get his shot in the NFL. He's bypassing the CFL? <laughs> Just a little leverage, maybe. Key for the Huskies is uh, possession of the football. Make sure that the center quarterback exchange is correct and that the handoffs are correct and you wrap that ball up. There's that weather, but I'm telling you, it doesn't take much for a ball to slip out of your grasp. A look into the eyes of Maurice Shaw. The Cougars scrambling on that one. The ball's loose. A little problem with the exchange. I think the center started to did a double clutch on the snap. Sorry I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> Marcus Tuiasa Sopo alertly doing what he could, and uh, that's going to be it for this series. There was no flag on the play. Right. That wasn't the ball control Rick Neuheisel was looking for. Fleming on to punt. Henderson back deep. <laughs> Trying to get to the corner. And he'll take it into the Washington side and then a flag thrown again. So it's a rule. We have to have one on every kick today. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Yes, it's that's a stat that most coaches don't like though, but no. I don't think anybody likes no. it. No. Just a lack of discipline. Be the twelfth penalty of the game between the two teams. In fact, it'll stack them up at six apiece right now. And we've had a large number of them on special teams. So they'll march it off, spot the ball, and we'll tell you all about it when we come back. Washington State starting this series after the penalty with the handoff to Burnett as the Cougars open at their own 39-yard line. The sportsmanship there helping Jeremiah Farms up after the tackle. And a few angry words as well. Rain continuing in velocity, and it's starting to pool all around Husky Stadium out on the running track behind the goalposts. A couple of weeks ago, we thought it was a given that uh, Deion Burnett was going to rush for 1,000 yards, be the first Cougar true freshman ever to do so, but he's been bottled up a bit. Of course, he does have that benefit of game number 12 as well. Birnbaum having to double pump there under some pressure. Sidelines, Taylor make the catch inside the Husky 35-yard line with some nice concentration as he was out in front of Curtis Williams. Very nice throw that time. And a little bit of time to throw the football. Birnbaum delivers on the money with this one. See Omari Lowe, good blocking by Dion Burnett, not allowing him to get to Birnbaum. And good job of hauling it in right there. Woo. Best catch of the day for Nyan Taylor. His third officially for 42 yards. 35 yards away now from becoming the all-time leading receiver in Washington State. Cougars again flank guys to both sides, open up the backfield. Burnett, the motion man, and they'll make the quick toss again. Batted and incomplete as nope. Zubidi took his eyes off. Are yep. they calling it hot or not? That was very oh, close ooh, to a boy. lateral. Yep. I think it was. Jermaine Smith over on the coverage. Well, tough to tell from that angle. But you go until the whistle. Smart play there by Smith. Huskies are going berserk over on the far sideline right now as they replay it on the big screen. Trying to claim that it was a lateral. Backside pressure, Birnbaum gets away from one but not the second. First it was Smith and then Tuiaea brought him down. Big loss on that one for Washington State. There's that lack of mobility, but also the pressure. Jermaine Smith really getting back there in a hurry. We saw in the, at the end of the second quarter, but Jason Gesser was able to get away from this type of pressure. This time, Birnbaum was not. Yeah, with that sack, the Cougars out of any hope of field goal range. They might have had a chance at a longer field goal had he just been able to throw an incomplete pass. Second sack of the day for Tuiaea for a team that has only 10 for the season going into today's game. Forced out again, nowhere to go. Hit as he throws, that ball's live. Still batted around. Towns tried to get it, it bounced on the sideline, so Washington State will maintain possession. 
Ryan Tujay a little slow getting up for Washington State. Towns a little slow getting up as well, helped to his feet. Hey, Sonny, we survived a scramble play without an illegal touch of the ball. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but an awful wet ball as it is. And this time, Birnbaum again with a lot of pressure. Daryl Daniels in there and Jeremiah Farms with the hit, causing the fumble, but no one can come up with a little grease pick down there. And you saw Mulatawa <laughs> Pele in the middle of it trying to hang on and couldn't, and then Towns with the last attempt. Cougars lost 24 yards on those last two plays. And now a whistle before they can snap for the punt, and I think there was some motion again. No, wait a minute, timeout called by Washington. Timeout, wow. University of Washington, The Huskies number not one. properly aligned on special teams, didn't have all 11 out on the field. Let's see if that becomes a factor later, loss of a timeout. Oh, it's just your typical Apple Cup chaos. We'll come <laughs> back with the WSU punt after this. Back at Husky Stadium, midway through the third quarter of play, neither team doing much offensively in this second half. Mike Levenseller down talking to his receiver for. You mean the claw. The claw. Levy's a pretty good guy, a good coach. Oh, come on. He's better than a pretty good guy. You have to understand, though, for Sonny to say that in Apple Cup week, that's a superlative. <laughs> now, so. now, if you and I were one-on-one -on -one <laughs> off camera, I would say, Levy, you're a great guy. Oh, the wind's shifting. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to knock your binoculars over. That's okay, as long as they didn't drop on somebody's head. We'll see where this snap sails with yeah. that wind gust down there. And the gust going one way up here and the other way down on the field right now. Good snap. Yep, they've managed a lot of them. And a high kick, again driving Jarzinka back inside the 20-yard line. And thrill Guess a minute, what? Joe. <laughs> A, a flag. Takes it to the 25. <laughs> We've got another flag on the kick. Uh, it's automatic. Josh Moen leading the special team tacklers that time for Washington State. Cougar band at the west end of the stadium. And again, Washington will be bottled up. The Huskies have spent a large part of this third quarter Holding inside the their own 20 During yard the line. return. Penalty being forced half the distance of the goal from but the end of the kick. The area First too down. now where with the weather the way it is, one turnover can change things in a hurry. Well, the Huskies very conservative on that last series. Very conservative. They need to try and get maybe Tuiasi Sopo outside a little bit and let him work a little magic. They're having fun. <laughs> Didn't want to ruin the perm though, so he kept the bonnet on it. I think both those guys are much like the weather. They take intermittent showers. I think they both still live at home. <laughs> Look like their mother's hair net. Shaw's going to be dropped for a loss of yardage. Meyer there to meet him. And one of the few times the Cougars have made a tackle for loss. Watch 99. Eric Boos attacking the line, but we couldn't quite see there. It's well, it's old Rob Meyer, that big defensive tackle who's been in the action quite a bit this afternoon. The unofficial stat they keep uh, on the board here at the stadium, that's the third tackle for loss for the Cougars as opposed to nine for the Huskies thus far. Well, coming in, Rob Meyer's been the leader on tackle for loss for the Cougars, and you can see why. Shaw, the soul set back to Iasi Sopo looking to throw over the middle, nice grab. And he really was patient, I think, that time, Sonny, and waiting for Elstrom to clear the zone. Well, he had a lot of time to throw the football. And when you have a lot of time, you can step up in the pocket and deliver. He's watching the linebacker. Let's watch right over here somewhere. See Tuyasa Sopo, the tight end clears. And right there, you see the receiver coming through with the reception. Thought about it once and waited for him to get through. It's a first down at the 21 yard line and a good call. Shaw takes it for a couple more. That was a pretty gutsy call on that last play as well though on that third and deep. Getting a little bit better breathing room right now out beyond the 20 yard line. And you can go to your different play calls on this one, bud. You don't have to say dive, dive, dive. 
Although the dive has worked fairly well. Well, not so far in the third quarter, the Cougars done a good job of stopping it at the line of scrimmage. And two yachts of Sopo now over 100 yards in total offense. Good pressure by Meyer. Tuiasa Sopo scrambling and getting clear right there as uh, they tried to go to the corner. And you're right, Ratcliffe met him solidly that time from the end spot. Pretty good spot, close to the first down. Might be a little short, but a little play action. The Cougars in good defensive position. Jesse Ratcliffe out there. Tuiasa Sopo being as elusive as he is, uh, able to get some good yardage and close to the first down, but may come up a little bit short. Ratcliffe did a really nice job of getting to the outside. They really tried to pin him in on that one. It's called third and inches. Straight up the gut. Shaw bounces off a couple and gets the first down. Holden combining that time with Ratcliffe and then Newman coming over to finish up. Pretty good help downfield. You see. Elliot Silvers and Mo Shaw just pounding it up inside. Pat Connor trying to help out, and I'm not quite sure Billy Newman needs to come in and do those kind of hits late. But you see Conniff, as he's done all year, Sonny, just clears enough of that spot for Shaw to break off of it. It's nice to have the two back backfield, Todd, where you can do that. Conniff doesn't do it statistically, just does it in all the little intangible areas you need. Stevens with another big catch, slips just outside the 45-yard line. Fourth catch of the day now for Stevens to lead all of the receivers. Good play call using the play action with Stevens releasing right here, going into the flat, and then he's going to be wide open. But one thing about this field, as good as it is and as well as it drains, it still crowns down, and he lost his footing that time, Todd. Nice little drive Washington's put together so far. Got the third down conversion there again. The number is for Jeremy Stevens. Have him split out wide to the right side here. Conniff on the dive that time. Falls forward for a couple more. He just keeps going. <laughs> Ratcliffe on top of him. Shavies there as well. Jesse Ratcliffe has been very active this afternoon, but I'm sure you've seen him make some tremendous plays this season. He's been able to use his quickness a lot to help Washington State. He's had to overcome a back injury early in the year. Seconds continuing to tick away as Washington mounts its time of possession statistic in this quarter and in the drive. And now timeout is called down on the field as they're bringing the play clock back up again. The wind might have moved the ball around <laughs> a little bit. And time called again. Reset the clock at 321. So we'll get those precious seconds tacked back on. And now they set it at 320 <laughs> on the scoreboard <laughs> clocks. So. I just started the second lane. What the heck? For Stevens, hangs on first down. Boy, Tui Sopo is not going to be able to feast on those kind of throws, though, very often, guys. That's a very tight throw right here into some coverage, but Jeremy Stevens able to co concentrate enough to hang on to the football. Kind of led him into danger a little bit there as Holloman put a lick on him, but this is a guy we've really been waiting all year for him to be a primary target like this throughout a game. Such a fine athlete, still learning the position as a redshirt freshman. Exciting to see him for a few more years. Well, he could have stayed quarterback, but his future's a tight end, and it could be a lengthy future. Shaw carries inside the 35. Gibbons and Smith on the stop. Smart move by Mo Shaw here. He sees a Cougar defender coming up to get him, and he does a nice little move right here to turn his shoulder and gain an extra three yards by that little move. Back weather, Sean out 15 carries for 50 yards. 10th play of the drive coming up right here. 
Jurgens in motion, never really got set. Shaw, big hole, flag thrown, and I think that's going to go against Jurgens. Yeah, it's a good call there, Todd. Your eyes aren't as bad as I thought they were. Well, every once in a while, you know, like they say, a monkey can type a novel every once in a while, I'll get a call right, so. Board to snap, ball start on the offense, five yards, repeat second down. Do you have a lot of those novels? Yeah, they don't read well. <laughs> <laughs> but I've but got an option for several screenplays. But they can not type them, that's, yeah. that's the important part. He's threatening to turn them into a book on tape, so be careful. Huskies have used up almost seven minutes on this drive. And not that Washington State's offense has done much when they've had the football, but obviously you can't move it at all when you don't have when it. You don't have it. And this has really been the strength of the Huskies all season, time of possession and long drives. Need to come up with some points, however. Well, and I was going to say, usually the long drives do result in scores. Shaw carries once again. And this coaching staff, Sonny, is a type that if a drive like this is successful, they'll go right back to it with the same style of ball next time they get it. Well, they mixed it up pretty well with some short passes and key throws to Jeremy Stevens. And a big catch by Todd Elstrom, another Puyallup receiver today. Third and long here. Shaw comes out of the lineup this time. Arnold is in. You see again the stats on this drive. Started back deep in Washington territory and Stevens flex that time coming off the line. I'm two for two. <laughs> you are hot this afternoon on That's a cold day. because they're all on this side of the field <laughs> where we can see them. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Well, Jeremy Stevens also has had to block blitzing people from the Cougars. Right here, he anticipates having a block and just trying to get ready. He tried to hold it. He tried to sell it, but it's not going to happen. No. Stevens will check out of the lineup, and the other side of that brother connection comes in now. Anthony Misen, the senior part of the brother combo, and the Husky side of it. As you see now, 15 penalties called in the game. Again, plenty of time, and Chiriasa Soko will run it. First down and more. That's the speed that was not around a week ago. Boy, that's a quick decision. Of course, the Husky offensive line did a good job of separating, pushing aside the rushing defenders of the Cougars. And seeing that opening, that split second decision to take off. I thought he had a receiver coming clear in the middle right there, Todd Elstrom, but he saw that big space and decided to run it for himself. And good decision by Tuyasa Sopa. Grady Emerson made the tackle. He is shaken up and being helped off the field now after making that stop. Steve Gleason out there on the field in uniform. You saw him in your picture a moment ago. I don't know if he was out there just to check on Grady Emerson or if he's going to stay in the game. He started to come off the field. Now he's going to try to stay in. Senior out of Gonzaga Prep in Spokane, nearing the 300 tackle mark in his Cougar career. Yeah, talented two-sport athlete as well, bud. Yeah, good baseball player for Washington State. That eligibility is done. Also named this week to the first team all academic district squad as well as getting Pac-10 honors once again Arnold for a little game Washington has really accumulated the rushing yards on this drive as well as they continue to run out time at the end of this third quarter See the drive alone for Tuiasa Sopo, some 60 yards of total offense as he continues to add to his Washington single season record. See whether they'll get another snap off here before the end of the quarter, and they will. And he simply throws that one away. Marcus quickly pointing to the referees. Well, there was a guy around as he threw it and sold it all in one. Ing Aliaga just tackled Paul Arnold when he was trying to get out into the flat on that screen pass. Take a look right here. You can't quite see it yet. It was just a little bit off to the right of the camera. And Tuyasa Sopo, of course, trying to plead his case there, bud. See, so just do like Marcus and draw. <laughs> yeah. 
just riding him to the ground. No call. Big third down play here, though. Third and ten. Going to be a timeout, though. Half hour. Oh, Five why seconds not? to go. Just to go back to that last point, Sonny, the difference between a 14-point lead and stretching it out to then make it three scores for the Cougars to come back is a pretty big one. Well, real tough when you have to throw the football in an afternoon that we're having today makes it extremely difficult for any quarterback, no matter who you are. And good play call here. I thought the timeout was good by Tui, although you hate to see him, but he does have the win at his back, guys. And perhaps a third and long to throw the football, it might be his advantage. That's another great point, too, the win shifting so that it is again at Washington's back going this direction. Cougars showing some blitz. Pressure, and down goes Tuiasa Sopo. Billy Newman gets the sack for Washington State. First one of the day. That will also end the quarter, so that might affect Washington's decision as to what to do. It just depends on how strong those winds are swirling down on the stadium floor. They have a kicker with a strong leg, but Newman's blitz pressure capping the quarter after Tuiasa Sopo had made a nice run. Fourth quarter comes up. Start of the fourth quarter at Husky Stadium. It would have been a 50-yard field goal attempt for John Anderson. So Ryan Fleming out on the field. Not a great day to be a photojournalist. We have to salute our guys who are hanging out there in the wind and the rain. But a few of the fans have decided this one's over. They're going to the warmth of the heater in their cars. <laughs> Not a pretty day. Not so much whether it's over as whether their fortitude is over. Fleming looking to bottle the Cougars up here. We'll just kick a low line driver into the wind, and it's caught in the air. Now you're not allowed to run down <laughs> further and put it down. Cooks making the play. It's a try. Reserve wide receiver, and that's the best catch he's come up with all year. Well, in practice, he's really been making some great grabs as a receiver, Todd, that time. Good job. Nice pooch kick. Fleming with the touch. Washington State will be deep in its own end, looking for its first touchdown of the day. Back at Husky Stadium, which was sold out going into the game. Many of the fans, the diehard fans, staying on hand. Diehard fans are part of what the Apple Cup is all about. And Anthony Meisen shared these thoughts about the Husky Stadium fans. Definitely the fans, I believe. Uh, sometimes it gets so loud out there that I would be sitting next to like Jeremy Stevens and we'd be talking. And you have to yell. And he's sitting right next to you. Because, and he still can't hear because it's so loud. And I think that's the greatest part about playing here. The, the support we get from the fans and how they stick behind us is the greatest part. And those fans still on hand as you see Washington leading the conference in attendance. And Steve Birnbaum leads the Cougars back out onto the field once again. I'm wondering if maybe Jason Gesser told Coach Mike Price that he wasn't ready to go after that little stint in the first half. Either that or Mike doesn't want to risk him down deep, perhaps. I don't know. But Gesser completes an attack tackle broken as well. Another one broken. Marcus Williams still on his feet out over the 40-yard line. Big receivers, you've got to really wrap them up or go very low. That time, Cougars with the big, big play. See him at the top, they kind of separate people up there in the top, bud, but coming back, some nifty footwork for such a big receiver. This is what has been missing from the Cougar offense. Breaking a few tackles, turning a short play into a bigger play. The old yardage after the catch, boom, Burnett got hit. We're still trying to see who that was that brought him down. Farms had a blocker on him and still reached out and made the shot. He looked like the fugitive. He just had <laughs> one arm. He, he knifed through so quickly that Burnett didn't have a chance Luckily, he got the handoff. Top of the screen, number four. Look for number four. Just one hand, bud. That's all unusual to knock a running back down with one hand. And Burnett got his bell rung, too. He's down with hands on knees on the Cougar sideline, trying to get his wits settled once again. Incomplete. Double coverage and a tough pass once again there. 
Boy, what a tough throw, but at that time, he's very fortunate not to have that one picked. Stayed with it, even with the slight pressure to try and force the ball in there. Force is big time, too. There you see Gesser on the sidelines signaling the plays in, but again, as you mentioned before, Sonny seemed to be locked onto Taylor from the get-go. Yeah, I think he was predetermined where that ball was going to go. And Burnett on the sidelines as well on this third and long situation. Into the slant and dropped. Zubidi. Zubidi has been the guy that just has not hung onto the ball any which way today, whether it's been the punt coverage or now on that toss, and he's unable to pull it in and that was a situation where again guys have taken their eyes off to think about going upfield. Well on that one Bob how many times we see a young receiver let that ball get into the body on a wet cold day it is very tough to hang on. Well now the Cougars after the defense was out on the field for an eternity they run four plays after the one first down and have to kick it away. Driving kick again over the head of Jarzinka. This one's going to bounce and turn and roll all the way into the end zone. It'll be a 58-yard punt and a great-looking punt that time for Kareem Anderson. It could have gone a lot further. Huskies will have it at the 20, still leading it by 11. Washington State freshman running back Dion Burnett on the sidelines. Talking with Steve Birnbaum as the Cougar defense will try to go to work once again. You see those totals. That makes him the leading rusher in the Cougar attack that has 23 carries for minus five yards today. But that last hit by Jeremiah Farms, it appeared to, to us that it was a one-arm tackle, but it may have been more than that, but yeah. He's feeling the effects of it. Yeah, I watched Dion come off the field after that one a little wobbly. Option pitch for Shaw. Been quiet for a chunk of the game. And that time looked like a couple Cougar tackles just tried to get out of his way. It looked like Lawan Gibbons was playing Matador. <laughs> or flag football. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Pick up some yardage. Watch at the end of this play. The Huskies not electing not to just dive up the middle, but going wide with Mo Shaw. When he lowered that head, Lawan Gibbons decided to let him fall forward without making contact. And the Cougars have another player shaken up out in the middle of the field. Looks like Grady Emerson, Emerson. again. So both teams have had guys try to come out and make it a couple of times. Gleason is still out on the field. Looked like the Butch was State hurt. Defense. He got his tail wrapped there. Yeah, that he needed some waterproofing. Bill Drake, the Cougar trainer, attending to Emerson. Another one of the Cougars, all Pac-10 academic selections. Maybe that's why the backers have been so good. They just outthink them as well as outrun them. <laughs> Math education major, the senior from Kennewick. He's going to do some student teaching as soon as football is over and looks to become a football coach. Marcus Tuiasosopo almost every week has lifted his game in the fourth quarter of play and some pretty impressive total offense numbers as well in the fourth quarter. Right now, just trying to protect the football in the lead as Shaw carries, and the Cougars again swarm to him, keeping short of the first down. Not a lot on that play. Holden coming up from the linebacker position to make the tackle. Number sixth in the Pac-10 on tackles is Holden. Saren Morong in the uh, lineup for the Cougars as well. Well, over the years, the Cougars have had some very fine middle linebackers, but mm -hmm. I think Mark Fields sticks out as one of the finest that I've seen over there. Sure, Anthony McClanahan had some good years. Ron Childs. Pitch to Shaw, he has the corner this time. Good pursuit and a nice open field tackle by Newman. He really did a good job closing down. That's yeah, very tough, Mo Shaw. He got Paul Arnold on that toss play. Prevents the first down as well with this play. Nice job of taking the legs out on that tackle. 
about all he can do against a guy that size as yes, well. But indeed. we've seen Shaw get clear to the corner on that so often, Sonny. Give some credit to Newman to get there in a hurry. Shaw seemed to be in the clear. Fleming on to kick once again. See if Henderson can spark the Cougars, give him some decent field position. Let's see if we can have a punt without a flag. <laughs> Wishful thinking, perhaps, but we'll see. Ooh, we got the last one of Anderson's. That floater is going to bounce and out of bounds. And hold your breath. Check the field. All right, we're safe. We've survived. The Cougars will have the ball. No flags on the field. We'll come back to Husky Stadium with more of the fourth quarter of the Apple Cup after this. As things come clear into folk, oh boy, that's, you know, it's a Husky attendant with a crimson umbrella. He may lose his position next season. We're back at Husky Stadium. Everybody just trying to stay dry and warm. Washington State looking to try to do something as they've only accumulated 78 yards of offense and haven't done much of anything in the second half. Burnett pushing the stack forward. That's his longest gain of the day on the ground. There again, the rushing yard totals as that carry by Burnett pushes the Cougars back onto the plus side. We have to dig out the record books at this rate. That's got to be an Apple Cup low for rushing yardage, I would think. Quick out and incomplete, trying to find Taylor. Green on the coverage. Not on the same page that time, Nyan Taylor and Steve Birnbaum. A, a quick out at five yards is very tough to do on this field right now. It's extremely wet down there. Birnbaum faced with another third down situation. With time, throws high. Green again on the coverage, and Nyan Taylor pounding the turf in frustration. Almost looked like Birnbaum was expecting the receiver to break downfield. Watch to the right side. Birnbaum looking there all the way again. A better throw would have had an opportunity to break it in. It's just a high one. And I've noticed this afternoon, but maybe you can help me out, but Birnbaum with his technique, not really stepping into the throw, isn't able to get some zip on it. We've seen a couple of balls where he had good form and really delivered it quickly. But it has not been in every throw occurrence. Jarzinka with the bluff. It'll go as a touchback. Steve Birnbaum, one of six passing thus far in the fourth quarter. It's Washington State still looking to get some points on the board. The Huskies continue to control the 92nd Apple Cup in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Get a little shut eye. And because of that, he's going to miss our GM drive of the day. And it was, well, he probably was awake to see it in the opening part of the half. Maurice Shaw capping the drive with this score. Good execution by the quarterback again, Tuyas Sopo. Billy Newman not be able to react to the pitch outside, and Mo Shaw taking it in and stretching out for the touchdown. The only rushing touchdown we've had in the game capped a seven play 49 yard drive of three and a half minutes. That's the GM drive of the day brought to you by your GM dealers. Nice looking pass there. Tuyasa Sopo incomplete. And the guy who usually hangs onto those Jurgens dropped that one. Trufant on the coverage. Pretty good throw to the outside with the wet ball. Chris Jurgens again, but he's a 6'3 receiver, much like Marcus Williams. For the Cougars. Nice targets for a quarterback. Boy, you throw in a 6 7 tight end. Oh. <laughs> Got a pretty good basketball team. Yeah. Arnold with a big gap to the outside and look out. Cougars trying to narrow the angle. The young man who went for 100 on the kick return is going to go for the score. Touchdown, Washington. Arnold goes 80.
only his second rushing touchdown of the year. But a bigger one there hasn't been for the freshman as he scores in his first Apple Cup. Nothing against Maurice Shaw, guys, but I tell you, you hand the draw off to a guy like Paul Arnold, a little bit more foot speed, and right here he shows why he came in as one of the highly touted recruiting prizes last year. Well, that's what he has that the Washington State freshman, Deion Burnett, doesn't have. That was fantastic the way he can accelerate away from everybody. Outran Trufant and the Holloman on his way to the end zone. That's the longest rushing play of the year for Washington as well. And Paul Arnold opens up his own personal page in the Apple Cup book. He also has nearly doubled his season rushing totals with his performance in today's game. 125 coming in. 101 now for Arnold as he takes it 80 yards for the score. Paul Arnold perhaps putting the icing on the cake for the 1999 Apple Cup. As he goes 80 yards for the score and makes it a 24-6 ball game. They're not giving up, of course, I've never known Keith Gilbertson no. to give up until after, oh, about an hour and a half after the final gun. Uh, he's still working at making sure there's no letdowns, but here's that drag in, and who's the man we spoke of earlier? Pat Conniff stepping up in the hole, but what a difference Paul Arnold makes. And while Paul Arnold runs the touchdown back again, there's a flag on the kick return for Washington State. Arnold with his second rushing touchdown of the year made it look easy. Uh, we saw one to be Davis out on the field there. As well. Illegal block in the back during the return on the return team. 10 yard penalty to the spot of the foul. First down. And Bud, it looks as though Mike Price is finally going to go ahead and make the switch here. Jason Gesser huddling with the team on the sidelines, and the redshirt freshman will get a chance to direct the offense again as Paul Arnold gets the congrats from his teammates. Steve Bernbaum watching as that unit goes out. Burnett going out on the field for the Cougars as well. A tough year for Mike Price. Two tough years. Huskies running all over everywhere defensively right now. Some pressure on the corner by Green. And Gesser takes off first time. Holds some blocks for him, and they do. And he takes it out near the 20-yard line as well as near the stick and should have just about enough for the first down. Simply a design quarterback draw. You ran this a few times, didn't you, Sonny? Well, actually, I did, just because uh, the other deep, the defenses were so full that it, they didn't <laughs> know what was hitting. The numbers for Gesser for today. 29 out of 41 on the year. With a couple of interceptions, actually. No touchdowns yet. Gives to Burnett. On first down, and again, rocked solidly after about a yard gain, and Towns with a few words as he gets himself picked back up. Well, I'll tell you one thing. That young running back now knows, Deion Burnett, what Lester Towns looks like. He has been face-to-face. -face he knows what finish. he sounded like for most of the game. Sounded and looks. <laughs> He's been right there all afternoon. Russell Meisen coming back in for Washington State. Cougars being kept bottled up by Washington's defense today. Well below their average of 345 yards a game. Farms missing, Gesser with tons of room now. Could go. Nobody near him if he gets enough blocks. Green coming over, pressure from behind by Tui Aiea running him down and the ball popped loose. Coop's got Let's it see. back. Nope, they got it back. How about Tui Aiea coming down to make that play and meanwhile, there are a couple of Cougars still down on the far side. I think Gesser didn't have, uh, he may have been doing that cardio, but I don't know if he had enough gas to make that dash all the way down the field. Little play action, a little pressure, and he does the right thing right here. Bud, you know, you've been See, he was slow because he had that parachute. His, his drag shoot, yeah, <laughs> his, his drag shoot released early. Good run and by the looks, young man. Looks a little hobbled there uh, and kind of slowed a little bit as he got inside the 20. 
and then uh, the Cougars able to fall on the ball there. But Gesser is being helped off the field after that gain. You see Burnett coming off over to the sidelines, but Gesser, uh, again, slowed toward the end of that run. And 59 yard run for Gesser. Trying to stretch it out. He's not feeling too good, as you can see. Bad break for Washington State. So they'll take it at the Husky 20. Burnbaum back in. Hawkins breaks a couple tackles, stays on his feet, scores. Touchdown, Washington State. Adam Hawkins with his first rushing touchdown of the year. And there's a little confusion out on the flanks. The Cougars may elect to go for two right here as we see Hawkins go again. Good blocking up front right there, but Daryl Daniels slow reacting to the ball carrier. Finally tries to catch up, but Adam Hawkins was determined to get in the end zone, and the young man from Pendleton got his six points. First touchdown of his Cougar career. Birnbaum staying on. The Cougars will try a two-point conversion for the first time this season. Little toss underneath and going in for the score is Menke. That cuts it to a 10-point ball game midway through the fourth quarter. Cougar fans finally able to make some noise in Seattle. Adam Hawkins with the score after the long run by Gesser, and it's a 10-point game. Back at Husky Stadium, midway through the fourth quarter, you see Arnold back deep along with Jarzinka for the kick. And that's going to be taken by Arnold. Take it out to about the 25 yard line, and Washington will get it underway there. Grady Emerson's coming back out one more time. Courage. Gonna go till he can't go any longer at all. It's a hand injury of some sort, it appeared to be. Well, now a little more focus, I think, perhaps for this Husky team, Sonny, after thinking that they could contain Washington State. Now they know they want to eat up some clock time, keep the ball in their hands here. They did that earlier this year, and very important right now, and over eight minutes to go to get a good drive, get a pick up a few first downs, and get some field position. Arnold the setback once again. And Tuiasa Sopo will scramble this time. He'll pick up a first down. It's who knows, Gesser and Tuiasa Sopo providing most of the offense here in the fourth quarter. See Tui right there making the decision to take off with the football. Good vision. One thing about Tuiasa Sopo, he just doesn't run straight ahead. He scouts it out and picks the best hole. Well, Washington State's game plan was to always have somebody shadowing Tui today, and they've done a decent job on the option of it, but not in a scramble open field situation. That's very tough to do. Looker the motion man. Arnold. Third down in a hurry that time. Rob Meyer making the stop. Just to go back to uh, Tui from that last play as well, Sonny, you have to know. We'll watch the defensive play here one more time. See Austin Matson being blocked, but Rob Meyer coming off his block. Dominic Dasty not staying on him long enough, and Rob Myers made a few tackles. Yes, he has. You've got to know how frustrated that young man must have felt a week ago when he wasn't able to do what he's been doing today. Uh, totally, and he wanted to come out this afternoon and prove to the Husky fans that he can lead this team to another victory and still have a long ways to go for that, seven minutes. Nice play fake. All day again just to decide what he wants to do, and he'll finally scramble out on the near sideline about the 40. Another five yards or so. Marcus Trufant is doing an excellent job of staying with the outside receivers this afternoon for a true freshman. Not coming up on the fake by the receiver, Chris Jurgens, who's with him all the way downfield. Right 
big play for the dogs with, here. Yep, work being done on the uh, sideline there with Birnbaum. And yeah, Washington State again with a defensive stop. The Cougars never say die attitude. They hope to get some momentum back right here, showing some pressure. Little throw underneath. Going to be very close as Elstrom makes the grab, depending on the spot. But uh, he appears to be about a yard short. Billy Newman with a strong game throughout the day today, bud. Done a nice Whoa. job. Kid who was a good running back in high school down in Southern California. Torrey Holloman out of Everett with the initial hit. Huskies are deciding whether they're going to go for it here, guys. Fourth and a short yard for a first down. Well, it's a gutsy call if you do go for it on your own 46 yard line. Well, now they're going to switch it out. And what they're going to wind up doing is to use up their last time out, probably. Yep. Thought they might try to come out sunny and try to draw the Cougars offside. And they will use it now. So midway through the quarter. Timeout, University of Washington. The third and third final. Third and final timeout this half. Thank you very much. You know, Wait. you think if they were going to punt it, that they would just take the delay. But this might be a decision to go for it now since they used that last timeout. Interesting conversation going on there with Rick Neuheisel talking to the referee, Jay Strikers. I think he was asking him if he saw that column by John Saracino that mentioned Sonny <laughs> Six Killer. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sure he was talking that. Either that or he's asking Jay uh, where, where they should make reservations for the bowl because now his word begins to filter out that the Huskies will not be going to Pasadena with Stanford's victory. They now have to think about other fortunes. Rick Neuheisel wrapping up his first year as the head coach at Washington. And one of the things he's been quick to point out is the attitude of the young men who have been in his senior class in his first year. And you're a coach in transition. Uh, you've got a bunch of guys who are wondering what the heck that means to them, especially those who are going to be playing their last year. They've just gotten used to a system. They've kind of risen to the top of the system. And uh, it's their year, and all of a sudden the, the, the rug gets pulled out from them. In, in, in a manner of speaking, and, and now they're not sure exactly what that means to them. And uh, some of them have had to accept lesser roles. Some have had uh, the opportunity to get more of an opportunity, but all of them, uh, to a man, has bought in. And it's the number one reason why we've been able to have any success at all. Coming on to punt after that timeout. Ball taking a left turn and be down at about the 30-yard line. Sonny Rick Neuheisel throughout the year has been very quick to point out that this has been the seniors team, that they've been here longer, and he's consulted with his seniors throughout the year. Well, you have to have leadership on your ball club, and one thing you look to is senior leadership. This year you've got guys like Mac Tuiaia and Lester Townsend, well, Lester Townsend and Jabari Issa who are captains. You have to rely on them to bring those young people up to the level that you need to play competitively. Steve Birnbaum returns to the field as the Cougar quarterback. Gesser on the sideline, not wearing a jacket at all, so he's still standing there. Lots of time. Incomplete as Birnbaum tried to force another one. Jermaine Smith was hiding on him a little bit, and if that had been thrown more accurately, Smith was ready to waltz the other way. Yeah, he, he was going to make the throw, and he sees Smith. Nyan Taylor in the slot right here, wide open. Look at that. And they break to it eventually, but again, Birnbaum not seeing it or making up his mind elsewhere and couldn't find Williams at all. Well, to Birnbaum's credit, he did have to get out of the pocket due to pressure and running off to that side. You know, your eyes are trying to scan the field, but it's tough to pick up some people at times. I'm sure there were a few anguished screams in the Cougar coaching box on that one. Play clock down to five. Little lob to the outside, and that one grabbed by Mankey, who trips and falls, and is short of the first down, probably, as a result. Mankey, a very good athlete, is going to turn out and try to help the Cougar basketball team out once football season ends here in a couple weeks. And they could use it, right, bud? Never hurts to have another big body. The lob over Smith that time, and Yamanke's frame making that a, an easier target. But it's a third in inches for Washington State. 
it's not a given if they try to run it the way the Huskies have played defense. Let's sneak it. Well, they're going to empty the backfield instead. And timeout called because the wide receivers never got in alignment and the play clock was running out. They had Hawkins breaking out of the backfield, but no one got set at all for Birnbaum to be able to take the snap. He calls the timeout. Washington State faced with a third in inches here with a little more than five minutes to go. You know, that was a great grab by Minky, but unfortunately for the Cougars guys, he comes up short of the first down, and from the time he caught the ball to right now, he has lost over 40 seconds. Yep. It's one of the things that uh, Washington State has been in this position quite often. Time this for season. our Magnolia moment, brought to you by Magnolia Hi-Fi, our play of the game. Tuiasa Sopo to Looker to Jarzenka. Well called play that time, catching the Cougars off guard, and Juan Gibbons just bit on it too much and let that little guy get behind him for the touchdown. First time that he has been in the end zone all season long. Sonny, getting back to your point about losing the, the 40 seconds as you see Dan Looker on the sidelines. Why don't teams in a situation like this when they're down 10 with five minutes to go, go into a two minute offense? Is it that much more difficult to get organized? Well, it seems to me like Birnbaum and the coaches have been a little bit out of sync at times this afternoon anyway. And I like the two minute offense. It puts a lot of pressure on the defenses and the defense is playing, you know, protect, you know, defense usually gives up a lot of yardage. Formation change. Now the Cougars will shift out of it. Hawkins breaking to the top of the screen. And Birnbaum on the dive. Did the ball pop loose? Looked for a minute like he'd lost it, but he hangs on and should have just enough for the first down. I think he may be just a little bit short with that spot that I see on the field. Did not get a real good spot. Measurement going to come out, so the clock stopped here. Should actually be 4.58 remaining in the football game. Rick Neuheisel watching. This uh, could be a big spot right here. For a minute, yeah, he nearly had the ball knocked away. Then Daniels falling on top of him, and it is short. Well, Birnbaum made a critical error right there, guys. When he got the snap, he lowered his head without looking where he was going. If he had his head up, he could have moved to his left a little bit, but and picked up the first down. That's a great call, Sonny. I guess that's heads down running instead of heads up. Yeah, you got to see where you're going. You, you can't assume you're going to get a big lick on you and not have your head up. Well, the Cougars went to five wideouts thinking they could spread the Huskies out, well, but it didn't work. Yeah, Washington brought everybody up to the line. Two back set this time. Everybody's packed in. Birnbaum going to throw on fourth and inches, and it's dropped. He could have waltzed around the corner for the first down. Instead, it was a design pass for Russell Meisen. Well, that's right there is the reason that pass wasn't complete. In my estimation, Bud and guys, Todd, is terrible mechanics on Birnbaum. Little play action right here, but watch his feet on his throw. Little hot pass. Look at the football. You know, look like a punt coming down. The receiver was wide open. Jermaine Smith on the coverage had his hands up. A little bit of contact, but not a much. But again, Birnbaum could have pulled that ball down and walked around the corner for the first down. Yes, and he had lots of time to plant his feet and make a good throw. Going to take a miracle now for the Cougars with the 446 left in the football game and down by 10. Huskies will have to turn it over for Washington State to have a chance. And Tuiasa Sopo going to the air. They're trying to add to the total. Looker is open and Tuiasa Sopo stumbling through that playoff or else it would have gone for six. He couldn't quite get the old feet in the right position, Todd, coming back after you the You and I have six. waited for this pass, Sonny, since the Colorado game. It's the last time they ran it. Right there, he should have delivered the football, but his left foot slipped as he attempted to plant and allows the defense to get back. And good job by Billy Newman, really, to close See, on See, now, it. I was going to say, Sonny, if his mechanics were a little better, that ball would have been completed. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Well, uh, you, you know, have fun of the apple. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Mechanics are different if it's the field causing it. <laughs> Smart call, however, though, just to go for it to really put the nail in the coffin, as it were, after getting the ball on downs. Now they'll go back to Arnold for a couple off the left side. You and I have been waiting for that, though, Sonny. We thought that that's a call that Carl Durrell and Rick Neuheisel could have made in a couple of previous situations when they needed it. Well, you, you need to have everything working for you. And I know, I remember in the Colorado game, it was wide open by 20 yards. 
that time the Cougars reacted to it fairly quickly and got back on the play. Good balance as the Huskies have run a variety of wide receivers this year. Hurst, or running backs, Hurst, Shaw, <laughs> Clemen, and of course, the fifth guy to get over 100 yards rushing this year, Marcus Tuyasasopo. And then some. Looking to toss again for Stevens. Breaks a tackle, stretches. And should have enough for the first down with the stretch. The ball popped out afterwards. But again, that lengthy stretch by Stevens should be enough to pick up the first down. Great job by the young receiver to be heads up. He had to turn all the way around for the reception, but right here against Smith, able to stretch out and make the first down. Anthony Meisen back in. He will apparently have bragging rights in the family home in Aberdeen in the offseason. His younger brother Russell on the Cougar side of things on the short end of the scoreboard right now. Arnold, who's carried much of the attack here in the latter part of the game. A little bit of a preview of the future, perhaps. Well, that was a nice preview right there. Getting contact near the line of scrimmage with a great balance, able to go forward and pick up five to six yards. Penetration right there. Actually, it may have been Jeremy Stevens that made the contact, but he still was able to keep that nice little balance. And Joe Bellino like gains five yards. And another Rob Meyer tackle. Clock continuing to tick. Rick Neuheisel would like nothing more than to just hang on to the football right now. Huskies beginning to think about one more game, a postseason one, as they'll raise their overall record to seven and four. And a lot of folks, Sonny, were asking a lot of questions after the first two games of the year. <laughs> Seven out of the last nine now. And I'm sure the biggest thing right now for these young men will be the what ifs. Coming so close to that ultimate goal only to fall just short. There's a lot of what ifs, but they gave it a great effort and you can't go back in time. Everybody wishes they could at some point, but Rick Neuheisel has got to be pleased this afternoon with the Husky offense maintaining some ball control here, particularly in the second half. And doing something that many of his illustrious predecessors here have never done, taking a team to a bowl game in his first season as the head coach at the University of Washington. Arnold once again, first down. Should be sufficient right there to close out this edition of the Apple Cup. Well, that's Husky football right there. Double tights, two backs. You've got a young man that's having a pretty good afternoon after that big touchdown run, picking up a key first down. But on the Cougar side of things, as we've mentioned, one more week to go, but it's not a picnic trip to the islands because they're going against a Hawaii team that has turned in a very strong season under June Jones. Boy, at the start of the year, you figured, okay, the, the Cougs uh, looking pretty good against Louisiana Lafayette and probably Hawaii, but all of a sudden Hawaii, a black coke champion. So it won't be the, the holiday. They will have to focus on football. It'll be interesting to see the kind of focus they'll have next Saturday. Arnold. For little or no gain as the Huskies go over 400 yards of total offense in today's contest. And uh, some friendly greetings between Arnold and Curtis Holden, who will face one another again next season. Just making sure they have each other's email address so they can send holiday greetings. Marcus Tuiasasopo coming in to serve as mediator. Being a leader like he is right there. Hey guys, settle down in here. We don't need any of that kind of stuff. Let's just run it out. The Cougars, Get out of here. The Cougars have called a timeout here with a little more than a minute remaining in the fourth quarter. We're motioning for their players to scramble over. Seconds away from an Apple Cup victory for Tuiaea and the Huskies. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. A little more than a minute to go as the fans begin to file out. Washington getting set to wrap up a triumph in the 1999 Apple Cup. And they'll pitch it one more time. Arnold getting through the initial wave of the defense. Now the flag's thrown for the block in the back. Emerson still out there pursuing. Good to see that. 
I think what happened during that timeout is Mike Price brought his guys to the sideline after Curtis Holden had a few words with Paul Arnold. And the, the thing Mike Price wants to do is make sure that this game ends in a in a clean way, that Huskies have won it fair and square, don't get chippy at the end of the game. Cougars, unfortunately, have another defender down over on the far side, and he'll be attended to. Mike Price coming out to take a look this time. It looks the one Gibbons. Cougars can ill afford to have Lawan Gibbons banged up. They are short at the corner already, and then getting set, as Todd mentioned, to face a Hawaii team next week. And they like to throw the football. <laughs> With June, June Jones. Jones. There's a surprise, <laughs> yeah. The illegal block in the back on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Big day for that young man, Jeremy Stevens. Last play of the game coming up here. Don't say that with this crew. We may never know when we may get another flag. Arnold carrying, and that should do it. Arnold with a 100-yard rushing performance and a touchdown of 80 yards in his first Apple Cup. And hold on, gang. Oh. Timeout, Washington <laughs> State. See? You spoke oh, too soon. Oh, boy. They're going to take it down to the bitter end. That is the final timeout for the Cougars. Oh, Rick Neuheisel was looking for somebody to get into the game or not. He might try to kick a field goal here after the Cougars. Uh, you know what? You know, well, you know if it were me, I'd bring Ryan Milicic in just to get him a couple snaps. I know it would be a token gesture, but this is a guy who has just put in all kinds of effort throughout his years, the holder, and uh, now they're going to cap the year. I don't know if that's, it may just be rainwater after today. <laughs> <laughs> save they, it, they, save they it. They probably had to, no, they had to take the top off for about 15 seconds to fill that barrel. Well, I saw him over there dipping that into the moat, so it's uh... <laughs> And guess who's coming out onto the field? I think it's Ryan Milicic. Yeah, he's in there also with Tuyasa Sopo. Maybe going to the wideout position. Marcus counting to make sure there's 11 in the huddle. Now they bring Stevens off. They're gonna have to hustle. There's only 10 seconds left on the play clock. Militich in the backfield as a protection blocker. There's the dump. And Tuiasa Sopo takes the final snap. And caps his first year with a victory in his first Apple Cup. Former head coach Steve Axman congratulating him there, his former mentor as well. And Sonny, seven and four year for Rick Neuheisel as he shakes the hand of Mike Price. Very uh, remarkable year. Most fans do not think that they would have ended up seven and four this year, but the coaching staff and has done a fantastic job this season. A couple of bang ups and maybe a few inches away from Pasadena. Bud, one week to go for the Cougars and again, They'd just like to close out the year with a good effort and a W. Yeah, disappointing season for Washington State, but they're hoping that all the young players they played this year will help them down the road, and they'll try to finish things off with something positive in the sunshine in Hawaii. Joe Jarzinka with a touchdown in his final Apple Cup. The Huskies conclude the regular season at 7-4. For Sonny Six Killer and Bud Namick, I'm Todd Pickett saying so long from Husky Stadium. Our final score, Washington 24, Washington State 14. 